The two mics, that's a familiar sound. That's, that's rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. That's, um, who is it? Dave, Chaz and Dave. That's Chaz and Dave, well Chaz done. and Dave, there you go. I think yeah, I'm going to so. call him Dave and Chaz. No, Should no. do some tweets here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Proud Dad Rob says, seven minutes in and Porky's lost the plot already. What? Save the bunny rabbit. Yeah. Hashtag plank. No. Uh, Craig says, oh, my God, not another flipping campaign ready to go down the pan. Uh, no. Matt says, 20 seconds into the show and Mike Parry's doing absolute Biloxio already. Oh, that's nice. And Ian says, imagine a poor bunny rabbit being mm. mistreated uh, or uh, by being stuck in a cage and having to listen to Porky's ranting. <laughs> what? There's loads of them like this. Yeah. It well, just goes on and on well, and on and on well, and on. I have to say, I'm rather disappointed in an element of the audience who can't have the same sort of empathy and sympathy mm. for poor defenseless, rab- defenseless rabbits that right. I have. Well, what about Thank Woodenhead? God I'm here. Woodenhead says, why is Mike Perry forgetting all of the Easter chicks that were given as mm. gifts? I stuck mm. mine in the oven and had it with potatoes. Oh, uh, now come off so, it. I mean, look, you know, there are look, just as many chicks being... Hang, uh, being hang on, uh, hang on. ...you know, being sacrificed for the hang Easter on. weekend, no? Hang on, there is a food chain in this world. And, for instance... Well, people eat rabbits when as I well. Was, when I was patrolling the North Downs... Um, patrolling? Yes, sir. Day. Yes, yes. Or was it this morning? This morning, that's mm. right. Yeah, by the way, how windy and, and fierce was what the weather. What an amazing... I saw you tweeted about yeah. some hailstones I hitting your, uh, uh, your skylight or whatever. Ba- yeah, bouncing off the, um, the V-Lux windows. Did they windows. do any uh, damage to the, uh, no. uh, the stuff on no. the uh, porky uh, roof garden? Well, it blew over a few plants, mm. I have to say, yeah, but that's about it. Uh, no, what I was going to say is... Yes, I told you there's some building work being done yes. down near me, and a lot of their stuff just got blown away. Fences got blown down. I saw a picture got... of a crane that was brought down. Yeah, yes. right, a lot of that. Yeah. And there was a load of trees down. I know, yeah. Trains yeah. didn't Work, but anyway, I was going to say is... Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, no, that's all right. Uh, despite the fact that the weather was very inclement, yeah. but it was, one minute it was sunshine, next minute it was fierce rain and winds again, there were a lot of little lambs um, prancing around. Yeah, there were, yeah. And, of course, of I look at the little lambs, <laughs> I think, well, they're, they're little cuddly things and all that, and, of course, they will eventually become meat on your plate. Well, yeah, But I that's a food chain work. thing. That is a food so, chain. So, Did you so have you... any lamb at the weekend? No. Uh, I don't think so. No. No, I'm just trying to think. What do you mean, don't know? Did you have a roast uh, on Sunday? No. Did I didn't you? have a traditional sort of uh, Easter. Right. I mean, I was doing Clash of the Times yesterday. Some of us like to work on uh, Easter Sunday. Yeah, well, you know I, I mean? thought as a true Christian, you wouldn't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, well, I... I uh, it's not exactly how you're supposed to celebrate the Lord's Day, is it? Well, No, no, no. The Lord says there is no uh, problem with uh, working in Denver. Well, he rests on the seventh day, actually. So I worked on Funny Good enough. Friday with you. Then yeah. I, uh, on uh, Easter Saturday, yeah. I don't know what I did on Easter what Saturday. What did you do on Easter Saturday? I don't know. You don't know what you did? I'm just trying to think. Are you so, still off the booze, by the way? Oh, yeah, I haven't had a drop. Really? Not a drop. Extraordinary. OK. Well done. That's OK. I was on the coast, actually, on well Saturday. Done. And I walked for a good uh, long way mm. along the Solons. That's what I did on Saturday. Did you? And that was brisk and uh, bracing. It was quite wet on Saturday, wasn't it? On Saturday, it rained in patches, actually. I remember going out without a coat and then, mm. uh, sorry, without a hat and I had to buy one. Mm. Yeah, so I got a lot of hats because I often buy them. Oh, what sort of hats did you buy? Uh, I bought a sort of... No, uh, a flat cap. Type. No, no, woolen hat, woolen hat. Anyway, you know anyway... What we, didn't know? We, we didn't say, actually. When we went to Cheltenham the other week, yes. you, you were going to wear your Peaky Blinders cap. Yes. Did you notice how many met young men are now wearing the Peaky Blinders-style cap? Well, that, that'll be from the Peaky Blinders, I'm yeah, sure. Course, yeah. But the thing is, you advised me not to wear it, quite rightly, yeah. because it was then synonymous mm. with the rather vile young footballer who was pictured that's urinating true. into yes, a glass. That's right, And yeah. he, he actually had a Peaky he Blinders hat on. Yeah, he was. So I wasn't going to be associated with that. Listen, talk to about uh, young men and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yes. Do you realise? Do and by the way, we'll talk about the England game in a minute. Yeah, I'm sure. And we we'll will, also yeah. talk about the England Northern Ireland. Well, it's uh, difficult uh, for you, uh, isn't England, it? Because you've already done a show about the England Netherlands game. game. That I wasn't involved in. Yeah. Well, that's because so, I like working on Easter well, Sunday. Well, you'll have so. to remember that obviously the things you said then are the same as the things you say now. The Lord says there is no sin in endeavour. 
So that's what I was working on Easter Sunday. Is that right? No, I'll tell you where the latest great sexism row is erupting, yeah, right? Go on, and you where? may have a view on this because you, you may have been involved in this in the past. It, the latest great sexism row, mm. because of course you said, did I go to church over Easter Sunday? I didn't, yeah. but I did talk to one of my um, religious associates, uh-huh. okay? Right. And he tells me the next big battle, the sexism battle, which yeah. is going to be, you know, quite, um, quite rough and quite detailed, mm. is the choirs that make up um, uh, in churches, the make-up of choirs in churches. Right. The, there's, a, there's a tremendous sexism problem here. Is there one? Because they're almost totally male. Are they? And they do not encourage well, young ladies to be cor- become seen, choristers. I've, I would say I've seen both, and I've seen mixed choirs, I've seen choirs... How many just you know, girls were there in your choir when you were a chorister? I wasn't a chorister. You were? You no, told me you were a choir no, boy. I wasn't, I was an altar boy. Told me you were a choir no, boy. No, I was an altar boy. That's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. It can thing. be the same no, thing. No, it's exactly All the right, how many girl altar uh, boys were there, there if you see what I mean? Well, there you go. Well, that's why you call they, an altar boy. Uh, yeah, OK, so... Uh, an altar boy. Do they have altar girls? Although my, my daughter, funnily enough, uh, when we were living in Wiltshire... Yes. Uh, she was an altar girl for a while. Right. I was in the Church of England, though. And how many... Well, where was yours? In well, a... I was a Catholic, yeah. I Catholic. see. I was raised a Catholic. I've you told you that Catholic. many times. Yes, OK. And in the Catholic Church, yeah. as you probably know... Yes. Uh, ...they're a little bit more behind on the old sexism front than the Church of England. Right, Because now... the Church of England's now got female bishops, hasn't uh, it? Yes, it has. Yes, Whereas I'm, in the absolutely. Catholic Church, you don't, you're not going to see a female pope any time soon. Do you know how much it costs to run a choir in even a, a small sort of um, rural church a no, year? absolutely no idea. £250,000. Rubbish. It does. What a load of old cobblers. No, no. Why does it cost 250 grand? Uh, I'm looking at a report in, an ecclesiastical report, OK, uh-huh. from one of my religious journals. Yeah. And it says uh, it can cost well over £250,000 a year to run a cathedral choir. Really? Many cathedrals... Yeah, why, though? I'm, I'm just well, telling you, you break it down just shut us. up for a minute. <laughs> many, uh, many cathedrals are struggling to find that amount of money. Right. One consequence Not is a surprised. reduction in the bursaries that allow children from lower-income families to benefit from the outstanding education uh-huh. offered to choristers. So cathedral choirs become yet more entrenched as enclaves of the wealthy middle classes. Yeah, but hang on. Didn't well, Jesus yeah, on. say, open the doors of the churches to the poor? <laughs> Right? You might have done. Yeah. Well, you see, I'm a friend of Chester Cathedral. Are you? What yeah. have you done for him lately? I give him, like, a few hundred quid every year. Really? And, and I get a badge yeah, saying but... friend of Chester Cathedral. Oh, well, you've only got one friend then, haven't you? Well... At least you've got a friend somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's oh, nice, I'm a friend of Chester Cathedral. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, my point is, is that, you know, they put out these numbers willy-nilly. Yes. But where is the evidence that it cost them 250000 well, what it does. What are they doing with the money? Well, you've got to buy the surpluses, and then there's all the uh, training um, sessions oh, that the on. choristers have. Well, how much does that cost? What? Well, how much does it cost to train people to sing? Well, you've got to pay somebody to t- teach them, so yeah, I but suppose... Yeah, presumably you've got the guy already there. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, usually it's uh, somebody like the dean or something, and that's part-time well, job, Well, they're paying them 100 grand a year. Well, I don't know, but, I mean, they have to get them in to, to do well, it. where do they get this £250,000 figure from? Well, I don't know, because I don't run a cathedral. Well, All I know is it's very expensive well, to run a cathedral. Well, you shouldn't, well, you shouldn't For quote, years you shouldn't and years and years. figures unless you know what they're from. For years and years and years, when we used to go to the King School Chester uh, uh, carol service Were you ever in a choir? No. No? No. Why not? With your amazing singing voice. Uh, <laughs> was I in a choir? I might have been. Well, I, can't remember. I might have been. I can't quite remember. I might have been when I was younger. But what I was going to say is, we used to freeze to death in Chester Cathedral mm. because the boiler blew up. Oh, yeah. And there was no money to repair it. OK. So there was no heating inside Chester Cathedral well, for about heating. five years. You don't need heating when you have your faith to keep you warm. Well, you, you could say that. But when it's about minus four outside, mm. because, of course, I lived in the north of England, you yes. know, where the weather is slightly... Uh, less favourable in the south of England. Is that right? And it got very, very cold. And, of course, if you're an eight-year-old and and this fierce minus-degree wind is mm. whipping through the cracked windows of Chester Cathedral, yeah. freezing your hollyhocks, it's a very unpleasant experience. Well, I'm sure it is, but I'm oh. sorry I don't buy this, this figure of £250,000. Yes. I just don't think that's in any way believable. Right, let me tell you this. To tackle the uh, inequity... Mm. Um, of the fact that, you know, only middle-aged and rich uh, boys now appear in choirs. Middle-aged? What, you mean middle-class? Middle-class, middle-class. Or middle-aged. There's no. hope for you yet. No, no, middle-class. You're your early middle-aged. Basically, it says that parents now have to sort of fund their their kids to become no, choristers. I don't understand why. Right? I mean, what, why do you have to fund it? Well, because you have to buy all the gear and you have to be able to run them there in your 4x4 four four to yeah. the cathedral and right. all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Right. And you have to be able to buy them the books and, and they have to practice and they have right. to come home and sing from these books, which are very expensive and all that kind of stuff, well, OK? It sounds like a racket to me. Well, it might be. But anyway, it's, uh, what's, uh, what's happened is we have formed a Friends of Cathedral Music mm. organisation, right? right? 
And it's we've launched a diamond fund for choristers. We? Yeah, it's going to... we? Well, I'm, I'm going to join. I'm going to join. Gonna I'm going to be one of them. I'm well, you're going to start singing. No, no, I'm going to join the fund to produce choristers from uh, working-class homes. Really? That's my ambition. I see. Yeah, and it says um, what we're going to do is we're going to raise £10 million and the first fundraising event will be Unique Concert at St Paul's Cathedral uh-huh. in April, OK? Right. Choristers from 60 British cathedrals, abbeys, colleges I mean, and apart chapels from else, right, they're will be charging, there. They charge you money now, apart from everything else, to go and even go into St Paul's Cathedral, to go into, like, uh, Westminster Abbey. You know, it costs about 20 yeah, quid. I think they do. It's ridiculous. I think Absolutely outrageous. What a rip-off. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The best of the two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Go to win it! We are the two mics. There will, of course, be winners and losers coming up in the next hour of the show. Mm. Just watching a bit of uh, the CBS News, which is on uh, uh, one of our internal monitors. Uh, yeah. during the night and uh, a fantastic name for a White House correspondent Chip Reed. Chip Reed. Isn't that a great name the, the best American I ever met name wise yeah. was Skip Bornhooder Skip Bornhooder yeah <laughs> fantastic hey, Skip. Now, you're coming um, here now yeah. I know that you're probably normally uh, elsewhere or otherwise engaged on a Saturday morning but right. did you catch the last uh, edition of Saturday Kitchen or do you ever watch cooking you probably don't watch no. cooking shows no, do you? I never watch it because no. Saturday Kitchen became this quite iconic show who does it with a guy called uh, James Martin James Martin who's become very wealthy over time there's Stories written about him over yeah. the weekend. I like wealthy and people. I know you do. Yeah, they're and good. It's uh, not mm. necessarily a good thing. Mm. But he's uh, mm. he does an afternoon show as well, which is based in his own sort of house. I see. Which he's managed bizarrely to be able to put all sorts of extensions on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. While he's been wonder using ha- it as, how. A, yeah. uh, as a show for the BBC. Yeah. But yeah. funnily enough, mm. um, I was reading a piece about him at the weekend, and he's quite a sort of um, straightforward uh, northern guy. I think he's a Yorkshireman. Right. Uh, and he's a great chef, and he's very yes. entertaining. But he did his last show. Yes. And he stepped down from the uh, from the show, and the the, the suggestion is. Mm. One of the suggestions mm, is mm. That, that he got fed up with the BBC, mm. partly because the set wasn't what he wanted it to be and a sink didn't work and all right. that, but also because he wanted to put his name forward to be host of the new Top Gear. Right. He's quite a laddish kind of guy, yes. you know. Uh, and uh, and they wouldn't let him. And seemingly that was one of the reasons that he decided to chuck this in. And they're now going to have to bring in a whole load of new chefs to okay. run the show. It's a very popular show. What was the point of the story? The point of the story is that I wanted you to know whether you, if you hadn't ever seen it, you should yeah. watch it because it, it gives well, you. Well, how can I watch tips. it now if he's left? Well, because it's going to be on with other people, and it's on a Saturday when? morning. When? Well, Saturday morning it's on for about nine or ten o'clock on, for a couple of hours. Hang on, you, you told me he's walked out and he's left, and yeah. they're trying to find new people. No, so the show isn't currently on then. Well, it's not. It's not on now because it's not That's Saturday morning. It will be on next Saturday morning. Well, what happened to when he walked out? Did they instantly find a replacement for him? Yes, of course they what, did. What instantly the next week? Well, he was, his last show was on Saturday. Right, right. So they will do a show next Saturday, and who'll be with in somebody charge else it? in charge of it? Who will it be? A temporary chef. And I don't if know. they're no good, you'll be, make me watch a show that's rubbish. Well, it'll be like when they replace Gary Neville. You know, they'll bring a a, 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 a you know, selection of different people in and try them all out. Sounds like trash to what me. What else do you do on a Saturday morning, anyway? What do I do on, yeah, Saturday, what do you morning? Do on a Saturday morning? I could be travelling. Travelling where? Uh, what did you do last Saturday? You didn't even remember where you were. Hang on, hang on. You said you were down in Gospel. I was down in Gospel. So what did you yes. do on Saturday morning? I was walking the Solent. Walking the Solent? Yeah, yeah. How long for? Oh, maybe an hour and a half. An hour and a half? Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. So yeah. there's still time, then. Hey, listen, I, there's been a, uh, very, very quickly, been a survey yeah, on, be quick. on, on, on the uh, the favourite Oasis song. Oh, yeah. And I'm amazed to find out that the vast majority of the general public have called it Wonderwall. Wonderwall? Why yeah. are you surprised? Well, I, to me, the best one was Look Back in Anger. Don't Look Back in Anger. Don't Look Back in Anger. Yeah. What about you? Um, well, I'd have to give it some thought. I don't know, really. Well, I mean, do you think Wonderwall was the best song they ever made? Well, Wonderwall's a great song, yeah. And Don't look back in Angus also. Yeah, Champagne Supernova's Wonder pretty good as well. Yeah, half I, a world, I actually like Half a World Away, the one they used for the Royal Family. Half I think that's a great away. song. Yeah. Mm. From the things I read it for the headlines Oh, just another never get enough news junkie But I round that corner and in no time Life section D's in hand The rest is in a garbage can I still read your horoscope I need you I can't 
Yes. That's quite a nice song. You know, a country song. What song is that? Cheryl Wright, I think her name is. Oh, Cheryl Wright, yeah. I still read your horoscope. I still read your horoscope. Yeah, yeah. that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose so. so I've that's never... about the sixth song in a row we've played. I've never, I've never heard that, that one before. Liked. I mean, you know, we're supposed to be talking about country music. Yeah, well, now we're talking about horoscopes. Well, I mean, what's wrong with you? Lord Rallo says this. Please get old Porky back on the bladderation trail mm. immediately. He's gone completely mad sober. Uh, I don't think uh, so. I think that's true. I don't drink for ten speaking days. Of actually, mm. Speaking of horoscopes, there's oh, a yeah. fantastic new book out, by the way, oh, yeah. uh, called The Dark Side Zodiac. The Dark Side, yeah. that sounds a bit... Yes, you know uh, how Zodiac uh, signs are supposedly, you know, yeah. very, very true in terms I, I, of, uh, you know, the characteristics... That I the never read display. my... Do you ever read your... Uh, I don't really, know. I never read mine. I don't, because, I because, read because read most horoscopes, particularly those in the newspapers, are not particularly worth reading. Well, I mean, most horoscopes these days, to me, are massive money-making machines. Well, they are. What you see is at the end of each, like, I'm Capricorn, right, and you see at the end, oh, if you want to know more, ring my num- number. Well, Jonathan Kainer to- yeah. was the king of that, oh, right? he makes millions. He got signed up by the Mirror when I was there for a relatively small amount of money mm. because he wanted to put all his telephone numbers yeah, at the right. bottom. And he made millions. Oh, I know, I know. On yeah. an annual basis. Absolutely. He employed about 15 people. Absolutely extraordinary. But mm. what you're going to be uh, very interested to know about, right, yeah. is that this particular Zodiac uh, guide is the first accurate one that I've ever read. Because the dark side zodiac yes. is all about what people are really like. It's not about you oh, know, really? what your day so is going to be like. So you believe in all this gobbledygook, Well, do you? it's just a very interesting one. Only because my eyes fell upon yours, right? Yeah. Because you're a Capricorn, I am are Capricorn, you not? I yeah. December 22nd to January the 20th, right? Yes, that's right. And this is a summation of people who are Capricorns. And I right. think I would defy you yeah. uh, to say that this is not entirely about you. Oh. You want to hear it? Well, if you think it's worthwhile, you think our millions of listeners are going to be interested in this, uh, you know, gobbledygook. Yeah, go on. Here it says, mean, miserly, petty, unforgiving. You have the stamina and relentless bloody mindedness to keep wearing away at the world until it's lost the will to live and follows your way. Now, that is about the best description I've ever read of you. Any resistance is exhausted by your endless spirit-dulling routine and petty regulations. What? You would do anything to preserve your social status and so prefer to keep your ruthless, pathological ambition under wraps. Hey? And you're a Scrooge, the Honourable Secretary of the Skin Flint Society. I mean, if that is not Mike Parry, in a nutshell, I don't know what is. That's disgraceful. That is absolutely brilliant. You've made that up. Now, it says here, your favourite deadly sin, and this could not be more accurate either, uh, is avarice. A what? cold accumulation and insatiable hunger that sucks you dry from the inside. Which not Which is exactly wrote this. you. Which not this to wrote exactly, this. Well, it's been written by a woman uh, who's by the name of uh, Stella Hyde. I oh, think we yeah. should get she? this woman on because she's an absolute genius. Romance. It's Saturday night. Time for your weekly bout of connubial unpleasantness. So it's on with the pyjamas and off with the, uh, the light. Underneath it all, you're as randy as anyone. You just won't admit it. What? Unbelievable. What's and that? then friendships. It says you've given up on friends because they don't appreciate your help. This is you. This is absolutely you. Even though your methods are clearly more efficient than theirs. And it says your dream job is a loss adjuster so insurance companies can pay as little and as late as possible. Or possibly a politician natural for a self-important status junkie. What? This is you. This is a, this is this you is shocking to an absolute T. Character assassination. It's fantastic. Give me that book, please. No. No, I demand it. I why? demand it. Well, why don't believe it? Why don't you believe it? I don't Why don't you believe it? it? It's absolutely it's absolutely spot on. Now what are you? What do you mean, what am I? I want to know what you are. Well, you don't know when my birthday is. Uh, You're supposed to be with this great friend of mine. As they say, you have no friends. It's in October. No, it isn't. It's in August. It's in August. August, yeah. yeah. Right, OK. October. So, so hang on. You don't even on. know when my birthday is. Wait you don't even know what my Wait star sign is. Wait a minute. So, I reckon it's Leo. Leo? Leo? It is indeed You're Leo, Leo. You right. Of you can tell I'm a Leo because I'm by nature a leader. And, and, Rubbish. And my sunny personality. You're not. Uh, you're what, not a leader. Is what shines through. You're not a leader. You follow. You follow. I don't follow anybody. I I have leadership qualities. You have no, only you following qualities. No, you haven't got any leadership qualities. No, you don't get on with people. You're not able to convince people to do anything you want them to Rubbish. do. Uh, you don't actually like leading people because you don't offer them any friend of friendship. You are not in any way a leader. Right. Here we go. Let's let's read what Leos are all about. Well, according I, to this well, so-called expert I'm woman. Sure, okay? I'm sure that whatever they say about Leo will be nowhere near as close to you. Let's see to uh, me as it is to you. Let's see if you accept this. So Leo. Right. So for Leo folks mm. out there listening, read Fatso. Uh, i.e. old MG. Well, I presume that's not what it actually says. Right. Leos are all kings or queens. Thank you. But deep within your roaring lion heart, you know you're an arrogant, intolerant, (laughs) pompous, self-centred bully. True. I'll just repeat that, folks. Arrogant, intolerant, Guilty pompous, charged. self-centred Although bully. I'm not pompous, I wouldn't say that. Right, you absolutely have to be adored by everyone. Which also is your... not true. Yes, it is. That's why you, you uh, can't stand not to be noticed by women no, when you're standing in true. a room. not true. Uh, which is your downfall, because you're easily flattered, 
and fail to notice while you're blissing out that others are stealing your powers. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. No, yeah, that, that so it means that it means that, accurate at all. No, it means you take your eye off the ball in all sorts of no, situations. Not true. And then other people pick up and uh, no, that's what and, happens to you. And progress in life. No, that's not true. That's, what, that's, what, that's what happens to you. Right. You expect the world to revolve around you. When it doesn't, you plunge into grand imperial sulk mode. You have double standards. What you deserve no, and what's not. good enough for everyone else, and you're never ever wrong. Right, this is you down That's to the T. That's not tea. true, no. Right, it says your favourite... No, fav- I'm perfectly happy to admit when I'm wrong. I have been wrong in many occasions. It says your favourite deadly sin is pride. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Uh, it's known as the sin from which all others arise and you just love to be up with the top people. OK? No, that's not me either. Now, in romance, this will be interesting, yeah. in romance, you yeah. know, because, of course, you are famously known as having the morals of an alley cat. I'm not famously known as that at all. You're a that rampant a Rogerizer. A moniker that you've given me. Rampant Rogerizer. It says, it's all about performance and applause. Oh, that's, that's it, yeah. You like you women to tell you what a beefcake you are, eh? No, huh? I don't, actually, no. But you focus so hard on style... Beefcake, yeah. by the way. Yeah. What sort of word is that? But, but you focus... What sort of word is beefcake? Uh, just listen. But you focus so hard on style, posturing and execution, mm. you fail to notice your partner's gone to sleep. Yeah. Well, that says it all. Well, none of them have ever gone to sleep on me. That says it all. I mean, I've gone to sleep on them a couple of times. Right. Now then, it says in friendships, in friendships, yeah. OK? Now, you had to go at me about this one, so no, you haven't got any friends, right? Well, you say you haven't got any friends. It you say, say you have no time for friends. It says Leos don't relate. They form alliances or allow themselves to be worshipped. You see, that's typically you. Yeah, I don't mind that. You like taking your uh, daughter out for lunch and yeah. dinner because she worships you. You're my no, daddy. I, no, I take her out for lunch and dinner because she's no, my daughter no, and I like, love her. Yeah, and, and she worships you because... You're not going to start attacking her now, are you? No, I'm not attacking... Because she can stand up for herself no, and no. give you a good kicking. No, no, she's, she a, will. she's a wonderful young lady oh, okay. and I well, adore let's her. Let's hope that you're not going to lose her as one of your only allies. Not at all. A fearful snob, you ally yourself with people who make you look good. That's true. I don't ally like myself me. with anybody. Like me. Like you. Yeah, like That's me. That's true, actually. I do look good when I stand next no, to you because no, you look no, like no. a tramp. No, 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 no. You like to uh, feel the glow of my company. The powerful, important, or just most of my life trying to avoid rich. you. Now, dream jobs, right? Mm. You say um, to be a monarch. What better way to boss others about? Uh, to be a megastar. Mm. Finally, the love of the little people. So that, that explains you down no. to the ground. And that you one's know. nowhere near as accurate, yeah. actually. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think I think your one is absolutely spot on. I would say my one is about 50% right. It's a load of gobbledygook. No, I think it's very interesting. A load of absolute very gobbledygook. Very interesting. Now, a couple of people have pointed out that yes. it was um, uh, You Should Have Known Better, the name of that song. Oh, you should have known better. That's Gemma right. Gemma yeah. says that. Uh, mm. She says that it's not love me do. Uh, and uh, Mark says uh, that can't be a real horoscope tailor made by Mr. Graham. It sounds absolutely on point yeah. as far as the one about you is yeah, concerned. Yeah, that's why I think well, you it put is. it together it's yourself. It's the dark side of the horoscope. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, Pascal says they forgot deluded in the profile of Capricorn. What? You mad? Yeah, they forgot that one. About anything. And yeah. uh, uh, Matthew says Leos have plank qualities. I'm not quite sure what he means by that. Yeah, neither am I. Mm. Um, I tell you something I did discover, by the way. What was that? Talking about uh, talking about um, horoscopes and all that kind of stuff. Do you know that beautiful people try to stick together? Beautiful and people. don't like having ugly people in their company. I'm not sure if that's true. No, actually. it is absolutely true. Mm. Uh, I got a report here uh, from Professor Jam Haberstadt. Who? Uh, Haberstadt. That sounds Dutch. Uh, yeah, he's from Otago's Department of Psychology. Where's that? I don't know. Where's Otago? Otago. Otago. Isn't that one of those Pacific Islands? Oh, here, here are. No, University of Otago in New Zealand. That's what I mean. It's a Pacific. Place, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And he says, yeah. we wanted to know if people group together based on physical traits they share, such as gender or attractiveness. It is absolutely true. Uh, we found out that uh, these traits predicted the physical position of individuals in their groups. We sought to determine how close they stood to others. On average, participants formed groups of six and were likely to approach others of similar attractiveness. Basically, what he said is... That's all cobblers, when a When a girl goes out with her friend... She'll only go out with a good-looking friend. That's not She'll true. She'll go out with an ugly friend. That's not true. Well, I have the problem with you. I don't like being seen in the same room as you because... You're you know, very fortunate that I even want to no, spend half a no, second with you no, outside of the studio. No, you give off... if it wasn't for me, you'd have nobody to spend any you time You give with. off grossness. You give off excess. You right. give off, uh, del- you know, uh, a, a delinquent sort of... Um, 
aspect of what your life is all well, about. Why always begging me to come out for a drink with you then? I never begged you to come You've out. You've always drink. begged me. I never begged you. Oh, don't go, don't go down the coast this weekend. Go come out with me instead. Oh, yeah. You're always the... begging me to do oh, that. Oh, when was the last time I actually said that to you? About a week ago. Oh, rubbish. Absolutely I, I've true. I've never said that to you. Absolutely true. I just want you to push off at weekends and get out of my uh, <laughs> my space, mate. Get way, out of my life. By the way, I'm going to tell you in a moment. I can't in, in the right now because we're out of time. But oh. there's been some serious damage done to a building near yours down in Gospel. I got some communiques on the roof's that today. Cut off. Uh, it has. And do you know what? I know exactly which building right. you're talking about. Well, I, walked we... past, I walked past it last weekend. Yeah, okay. Well, Seriously. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll Very talk bad about news. that coming up. But coming up next, yeah. though, we're going to talk about uh, Jaws and uh, Sharp Music, of course, aren't you, Mr. Cameron? Yes. From? Jaws. Jaws, yes, yes. exactly right. You yes. know why we're playing that? Well, because we're going to be talking to an alien hunting expert. That's right, Rob about Simone. Whether or not there is a. Uh, whether or not there has been. Yeah. A shark on Mars. Yeah, exactly right. Now, according to uh, an image captured by the Curiosity rover, yep. uh, there's a pic- there's a sort of landscape. I think you've seen this picture, right? Yes. Uh, and in the bottom left-hand corner of this landscape mm. is a shape that looks very much like a shark. Mm. Now, nobody's saying that, obviously, that means there's a shark there. But what they're saying is it might mean that it's in some form it the of... Some of kind of a fossil or a petrified yeah. fish or something like that. Let's talk to Rob and find out what it's all about. Mm. Rob, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike and Mike. How are you guys going? Yeah, yeah very, very well, indeed. Well, thank you. Now, we've spoken before, I believe. Um, this is an interesting story, isn't it? I mean, basically what uh, the, the sort of uh, UFO enthusiasts and alien hunters and people are saying is that uh, this might be proof that there was once some kind of ancient ocean on Mars, on the surface. Yeah, you know, Mars did have water. It absolutely did have water, a lot of water. In fact, there's still water up there at the poles. So, yeah, I don't think that's really in dispute anymore. Um, how do we know it did have water, Rob? You sound very uh, positive about that, but how can you justify that? And if it did have water, if it did have oceans, where's it all gone? Under the ground, uh, because the surface environment of Mars is so hostile. Mm. But at the poles where it's colder and the temperature is more stable, they have determined that there is absolutely some water up there. In fact, they know there's water on the moon, too. So mm. water is not a scarce uh, you know, element in the universe. It's spread out all over, you know, just like it is anywhere else. OK, so could this ocean have um, contained sharks and fish? I doubt it would resemble what we have on Earth, but, yeah, absolutely. It could have, it could have supported all kinds of uh, marine animals, and uh, most probably did, because Mars was alive and thriving before Earth was. Mm. Earth was still, you know, a big ball of molten rock, but uh, Mars had its day in the sun, so to speak, a lot earlier, a million years or so before Earth. Really? Yeah. See, the interesting yeah. thing for me on, in, this, in this whole picture is, I mean, presumably um, people are staring at these, uh, these images from mm. the Curiosity rover looking for all sorts of clues for things. And if you look at the image itself, I mean, it's a very small part of a very big landscape. And, I mean, if there were, for example, petrified fish proving that there had once been an ocean, wouldn't there be more of them? Because I'm only seeing one. Yeah, well, this gets us to the Daily Mail article, and it shows this rather whale-like uh, feature on uh, the uh, the surface there that was captured by uh, Curiosity rover. And I have to say that there is a lot of great evidence that shows artificial structures on Mars. P- the pyramid on Mars is extraordinary. Tithonia, a lot of other strange things. But I have to say, this picture is absolute cobblers. Oh, you don't think you don't think this uh, this shark picture is of any use at all? Because interestingly enough, they also talk about something called uh, pareidolia, the mm. psychological response to seeing faces and other significant and everyday items in random stimulus. It's like when people see, you know, the face of Jesus Christ in a piece in of cloud. toast or something like that, yeah. or in a cloud. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, how do you tell the difference? I suppose is what I'm saying. I mean, you're telling us that you know there was uh, oceans there, and there was probably creatures of some kind in there, um, but but we're not looking at any of that. And no, this shot was taken by, you know, the rover, yeah. which means yeah. at best the camera could have been maybe five, six foot off the surface. Yeah. And what we're looking at looks like a whale more than a shark, doesn't it? Well, yeah. they're also saying it's about the size of a small bass uh, or a salmon. Yeah. So it's not yeah. really as big as it's not really a shark size, yeah, but it's it, it, it's tiny. I mean, as you've dismissed this, Rob, and said, "Oh, it's all a you know a load of rubbish." Like Cobleros. Kind of Sorry, Cobleros. Yeah, co- yeah, Cobleros. I, I totally agree. But you are in fact a very well established alien hunter. Where else are you looking for aliens, and have you found any? Ah, well, I'll tell you a great story. I had a conversation with legendary Buzz Aldrin. You know this yes. fellow. Yep, legendary guy, serious guy. 
doctorate from MIT, everything else. His new thing is all about one of the moons of Mars, Phobos. Now, again, unadulterated photography from the satellites. If you look at the Phobos images, you'll see what can only be described as a monolith. This rock, this moon that's perfectly flat, all of a sudden has this thing sticking up. It looks symmetrical. And Buzz will tell you, hey, you know, that's unusual. We don't see things like that. And that's just one of many things. Well, well, what is it? What does does Buzz think it is? Well, it's a weird moon to begin with. The structure of it's hollow and, you know, it doesn't seem to conform to what we would expect to be there. And but are there any aliens? Are there any aliens contained well, on this moon? Why just wait for him to explain? Well, because I'm asking the question to try and get to the core of it. I mean, are there any aliens yeah, on this moon? Yes, you know, yes, you're, you're quite keen, uh, as many people are, to, to try to figure out the truth of whether or not, you know, there's, there's life out there. Mm. And we don't know. We haven't seen any concrete evidence, but we've seen enough that tells us, wait a second, now there's something going on here, and... Yeah, I mean, you know, even the, even the, the heads of NASA will say, well, life was certainly on Mars before it was on Earth, and it, our life probably started from Mars because mm-hmm. what happens is you know rocks get kicked up, and they can fly through space and land on a different planet, and we're not that far, really, cosmically speaking, mm-hmm. and they know that these little you know these little bits of life, these these spores, can survive the harshness of space. It's called what is it called the uh, panspermia. But yeah, nobody yeah. from NASA has officially said that they believe there's life on Mars, have they? They have said that they believe life started on Mars and it mm. helped kick off life on the Earth. But no, they haven't said that there's life on Mars. So I think they're finding, you know, uh, precursors of the amino acids and, and, and methane and things like that. Yeah, yeah, but so Rob, this is all... Time. Sorry, Rob, this is all gobbledygook. Can I ask you again? You're an alien hunter. How are you getting yeah. on? Have you found any aliens? Well, you know, we're not looking for aliens. We're looking well, for... Well, hang on. You're an alien trait. hunter. Well, you call him that. Yeah. I mean, if, if you were a, a, a big game hunter, you'd go to Africa yeah. and you'd be shooting lions and things. Now, you're an well, alien you don't hunter. You shoot aliens, do you? No, no, you don't. But you're an alien hunter. So, wh- have you found any? <laughs> well, you know, I'm a bit of a researcher as well. But in, in the case of Mars, we're looking for the remains of either life or civilization. Mm-hmm. I thought you were looking, looking for aliens. People, so, <laughs> well, we, well, it's we, all part of the same thing, isn't no, it? No, it's not. It's not. I well, want to know if you've found any aliens. Well, you can't have an early civilization without alien beings, Yeah, can but you? talking about amino acids, that, that, that's one millionth of an alien, you know? I want to know if you've seen somebody resembling E.T., you know... No. Uh, ...padding around somewhere. Of course not. Look, there are no fast answers in ufology. This is a discipline of patience. And, you know, you... you patience? Rudyard Kipling poem earlier. I'm, I'm sure he had a few words of wisdom when it comes to appreciating, you know, how things evolve and, you know, being yeah. patient. Well, we've been patient for about three million light years, haven't we? And we still haven't found any aliens. I, I think you should resign and give it up, mate, because <laughs> an alien hunter, you appear to me to very, be a failure. Very rude. That's right? very rude. I'm not being rude. I mean, what do you pay call no it? Te- Rob, but pay no attention to him. He's just That's very grumpy. He hasn't, he hasn't had a drink for ten days. He's no, very no, upset. It's not that at all. I just think it's ridiculous to be an alien hunter if there's no aliens. What's the point of hunting something that's not well, there? All right. Well, why don't you make it easy for Rob? Rob, well, tell us some of the things you've discovered, then, if you haven't found any aliens. Well, we, what we've discovered on Mars is a variety of things that look interesting, things that look suspicious, things that look symmetrical. What, like that's amino acids? Let's yeah. let him speak. Yeah. Let seen let a speak. suspicious amino acid let him, lately. Let him speak. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Rob. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, there, there's this uh, complex called uh, Cydonia, which not just it doesn't just have these pyramid structures, but it has the, the classic face on Mars yeah. that a lot of people, you know, a lot of controversy about. Uh, there's another city called Tythonia, which has amazingly artificial uh, type uh, features to it. So now again, we don't get our hands on the raw data. You got to remember that every bit of information that you've ever seen from space yeah. from NASA has gone through their filters. Yeah. And what you're saying is they're keeping it secret from us. That's right, and we have evidence to suggest that they absolutely have. They've airbrushed. They, the but they haven't been able to keep it. You haven't got any evidence. The U.S. government, Rob, haven't been able to keep anything secret for no. for centuries. I mean, everything they ever try to keep secret always comes out. Yeah, exactly. Well, the Chinese would know about it now. 
I bet you the Chinese would find aliens if they had your job because they're a bit more diligent about the way they go about it. I think that's. I think. I think I've heard enough now. No. Rob, listen. Thank you. We've got to leave yeah. you there. Thank you very yeah. much indeed. Are you very rude yeah, to he's, Rob? Man's hopeless. Supposed well, to be an alien hunter, and he talks a load of rubbish about. Oh, you know, seen a few shapes, and there's a lot of amino acids well, he's about. Trying to draw conclusions. Well, I mean, no, how do you, can, how can you call difficult. yourself an alien hunter? Well, because he is a hunting for aliens. You know, so if he hasn't found any yet. You know, if I describe myself as. Well, if you were a big game hunter and you were working down in Croydon. Yeah. You wouldn't catch much big game, would you? Well, no, that's not the right analogy. So he's not in the right place, is if he? I, listen, he's if not I, in the right place. If I said to you, look, I'm retiring now and I'm going to Northumberland, there's a river there called the River Cokey, and I'm going to become a gold prospector. I'd probably say Oaky Cokey then. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Okay. And, and I'm going to become a gold prospector. And, and I spent the next three years with my little pan and dish, you yeah. know, sifting the water and yeah. all that, but I didn't find a speck of gold. Yeah. You'd say, I thought you were a gold prospector. But no, I haven't I found I any that gold. Rude. That's no, the same as Rob, the old rude. alien hunter. He's not an alien hunter. Well, if you've got Rob's to, no, a fantasist. No, if you want to find gold... A juice head. No, you've got to go and find where, go where the gold is, right? Yeah, but you've got to go where the aliens are. Yeah. There aren't any on the moon, well, on, the, on well, the Mars. Well, he can't go to Mars, can he? Well, he's, he says he's got all the information and secret, no, uh, rude. secret research and all that and then talks about amino I acids. Mean, what th- does an amino acid look like? Anyone what does think, an amino acid look like? Anyone would think, it depends if you're looking at it under a microscope or not, anyone would think, that with yeah. the amount of rubbish you come out with, yeah. that you talk absolutely perfect sense all the time. Well, I, I talk more sense than alien unto Rob. Really? He's never seen an alien. <laughs> What's that? The song. The song. Yeah, what do you make of it? Uh, it's okay. Okay. What am I supposed to say? Well, this is Little Feet. Little Feet? I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, what are they? A fantastic country and western band. group? Well, not the country and western, no, but no. they're kind of country rock band. I country guess rock band. They were yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Are the Eagles a country rock band? I would say so, yeah. yeah that well, was Fat Man in the Bathtub. Great fat, song. Fat Man in the Bathtub, yeah. yeah it sounded all right. You know, it didn't sound anything special. Yeah, OK. I know um, it's not up to your general standards of going to uh, Mount Batten's home yeah. and setting uh, the belly dancer's hair on fire and well, that falling was my about fault. Uh, listening to Abba's Greatest Hits by the Pop. I got a bit Goes of response James to that today. Last Somebody put a picture together of a, a belly dancer with a hair on fire. I know. You know which I thought it was a bit harsh. But now, there we Stock are. says this. Yeah. Uh, all the aliens are from the dark side of the moon, you plank. Yeah. Uh, well, that's Mark why I probably says, don't see them. Mike Parry talks of three million light years is time. It's actually a distance. Yeah, well, OK, but it's, it takes time to get out there, doesn't it, if you see what I mean? Um, uh, uh, here's one from Mustafa yeah. who says, Porky needs a drink ASAP. We are seconds away from his liquids to explode. What? And uh, Becky says, I'm a great believer in looking for aliens. They may have a cure for cancer. Uh, well, they might. That's absolutely true. But, mm. I mean, considering the, the alien hunter we just spoke to, Rob Simone, never seen an alien, calls him an alien hunter, man's a failure. Hey, listen, I tell you what... Well, what talk- about people who yeah. are yeti hunters and haven't seen a yeti? Well, nobody's ever seen a yeti. Well, some people claim they have. Yeah, claim they have, and they claim they've seen a shadow in the, mm. in the, in the far, far, you know, the far distance and all that under a tree. Now, and and people- they claim that they've seen big footprints, but nobody's ever prone with big, big, big footprints with the you yetis. Mean big foot footprints? Yes, that's right, Not yeah. big footprints. Big footprints. Bigfoot footprints. Which could be Bigfoot footprints, indeed. Yeah, Bigfoot footprints. Yeah. Uh, Kevin says, I've never heard Por- Porky be so rude. Aggressive talk coming from a hobbit with an IQ of 47. Uh, excuse me, I'm not going to put up with some joker who comes onto this show and claims to be something he's not. I have the you know, the uh, the good nature and the will of uh, millions of people who are the audience to look after. Russell says, Porky back to his disrespectful self, hashtag on the wagon. No. You are definitely more grumpy. No, I don't Simon think so. says, rudeness up to level 10. Shame on you, Porky. Yeah, well, you know, you say what you like. I don't put up with fools. I don't. I don't uh, tolerate fools lightly. What's the expression? Don't uh, something fools lightly. Don't suffer fools. Don't suffer fools no, lightly. That's suffer right. Suffer fools gladly. Gladly. That's right. How, yeah. about, how about from Derek in Pencoid? Oh, the Bob Queen. Uh, Mike Porky's always saying, if you're not winning, you're not trying hard enough. That's does right. that explain why Everton haven't won a trophy for twenty odd years? Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, they're we, not trying hard enough. No, it's not that. It's just that we've been caught in a in a vicious financial trap. And uh, and actually, everybody has been trying incredibly hard, and we've now got what we think is a result. So uh, I think previous boards to the one that Mr Kenwright put together didn't try hard enough, and that set us back a good 20 years. Dear me. We're in a good shape now. Uh, now, listen, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about, man. Yeah, go Do you on. remember earlier today... Why did you call me man? Have you been well, shouldn't I? catapulted back to the 70s? No, 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 it's just an expression. Now, early today, we... OK, uh, man. We re- <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. We relaunched um, cool. uh, Virgin Radio. What? We relaunched Virgin Radio. 
Well, we launched Virgin Radio, didn't we? We relaunched. I don't think we relaunched. Yeah, Virgin used to be a radio, and then it sort yeah, of yeah, but went it's off not, the air. But it, they're two things are entirely disconnected, surely. Well, I don't think so because anyway, the point is this. Uh, what is the point? Didn't Mr Branson visit this building last week? I think so. I think he did. I didn't see him. Now, um, on the basis of that course, your eye's caught by things that you see, which says Virgin or Branson or something like that. Well, your eye is. Yeah, it is, yeah. Mine isn't. I can't believe how incredibly successful Richard Branson is. I mean, I knew that he well, was why? a self-made what you, billionaire. What did you, what did you th- <laughs> yes. So you knew he was a self-made billionaire, yeah. but you had no idea how successful... Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I mean the extent of, of, <laughs> of his success. Now, for instance, he formed a budget airline in America... Yes. Right. I didn't know that, actually. He did. It was Virgin America. And uh, even though he sold it on, mm. he kept hold of a part of it, and he's now going to make another £500 million. Pounds. Is he? Let me read this to you from this um, financial journal that yeah. I've uh, come across. Right. The board of Virgin America uh, has given two prospective bidders until the end of this week to table formal takeover offers, and it expects to thrash out a deal within the next fortnight. A successful offer by JetBlue or yeah. Alaska Air right. could result in a $500 million payout for Sir Richard Branson, okay. who owns about 30% of the American capital. Hmm. The airline, which had its inaugural flight in uh, 2007 and which went public in 2014... Is this is... JetBlue? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. Because uh, I, I only really noticed... It's that... valued at about $1.7 billion. Because right. I only really noticed JetBlue, I would say, a few years back when I, you know, yeah. having, having not lived in the States for quite a long time, yeah. I only noticed that they were actually there yes. as a budget airline probably, I don't know, six or seven years, sure. maybe around about then. But to get it right, Virgin America still exists. Does it? But... It's being bought by JetBlue. Oh, I see. JetBlue are trying to take it over, OK? Oh, so he doesn't own JetBlue? No, he owns Virgin America. Oh, OK. Right, OK. But uh, that will become JetBlue. So do they use Virgin America to fly you around if you fly Virgin, you know, to New York? Say? I assume so. I assume if you no, fly if, if you fly into... I flew... Last time I was on a Virgin plane, I flew to Las Vegas, and I assume that they've got internal flights there to get you to L.A. Right. and San Francisco right. and all that. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Maybe. I would imagine. Anyway, um, just to go on, Virgin America was approached first by Alaska Air. Both airlines were. But then what they've done is they, they, they say, um, to Richard launched Virgin America with a promise to fill a gap in the U.S. airline market. That is pretty bold, coming mm. from a Brit going into the, you know, the very, very competitive well, American the business market. Well, always been is bold, though, isn't he? I mean, he has always been very bold. Anyway, it says he brought a premium branded but low cost service, including power outlets at every seat, in flight wireless internet access, and Virgin's on demand entertainment system. Okay? The company, which operates a fleet of 58 Airbus, I mean, that's a big airline, Mm. 58 Airbus A320s, has performed well in consumer surveys and has been named repeatedly as America's best domestic airline. Okay? What, Virgin Virgin America? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, America's best domestic airline. I didn't airline. even know you had an airline, though. No, sorry? I didn't even know you well, had an airline. Well, that's what yet. I'm saying. This is the whole point. Um, now, but uh, he doesn't own it, though, right? He owns 30% of it. Okay. Because he went public and sold the shares, uh-huh. but retained 30% of the shares himself. So is he still the chairman or anything like that? Uh, I can't tell you that because it doesn't say so here. But it, it, but that 30% he owns is worth $500 million, yeah. which he'll get if JetBlue buy it, OK? Right. But anyway, it goes on to say... So is this some, some big hagiography for Richard Branson well, giving me that? Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm just telling you, it is this man's business life is incredible. So it goes well, on to say... Well, he's a businessman. Why wouldn't it? Hang, why, why that's exactly what they because do. Because a lot it? of businessmen don't make this sort of success. They mm. just fail, right? But anyway, just to finish, it did not make a profit until 2013. Yeah. I mean, this is the way guys run these businesses. You know that Ocado thing? I don't think that's ever uh, Ocado, made a profit. No, hasn't made a profit. And yet it's worth but, uh, it's worth a billion quid. Well, except it's kind of associated with Waitrose, so it's well, not quite the same, is it? I mean, they claim mm. that it's a separate entity, but yeah. it's not really, because they work with Waitrose. Anyway, it says in 2014 and 2015, it made full-year profits of £60 million and then £340 million respectively. Right. So it's suddenly been gone into profit, OK? And it's hard to make a profit in an airline business as well, because well, I mean, most is. airlines are shrinking, aren't they? Yeah, not only that, but the cost of fuel is so uh, unpredictable. Yeah. So Richard's in interest in the airline is restricted by foreign investment rules in the United States, so I have to fight all that, which limit him to voting rights on 24.9% of shares. He holds a stake of about 30% through the Virgin Group, OK? But then, <coughs> then what they do is they say just a list of um, Sir Richard's stakes in mm. businesses. So in Virgin Atlantic, he's got 51%. Virgin Australia, 10%. Virgin Galactic, that's the... Take it take into yeah, space, right. uh, 57%. Virgin America, 30%. Virgin Money, 34%. Virgin Active, 20%. Virgin Pulse, 20%. Virgin Care, 92%. Well, that's obviously the secret, isn't it? Well, Virgin Enterprises, 100%. Virgin Trains West Coast, 
which you and I travel on when we go to Newcastle or whatever. Uh, no, 50, we don't. 50, no, we don't. I no. do. No, why would you go on the West Coast if you go to Newcastle? Oh, yeah, sorry. When we go to Liverpool or Manchester, sorry. Right. Liverpool no, or we Manchester. we don't travel together on a train anyway. No, Virgin Trains, West Coast. 50, well, we went on a Virgin train recently somewhere. Hey? No, we didn't. Cheltenham? No, we went to Cheltenham. Yeah, was, was that not a Virgin, Virgin train? Okay, yeah. Right, Virgin Trains. Great Western, I think. That's right, it was. Yeah. Virgin Trains, West Coast. He doesn't know any of that, does he? Virgin Trains, West Coast, 51%. Mm. Virgin Trains, East Coast, 10%. Have you seen the time? Virgin Mobile, Latin America, 15%. <laughs> Virgin Mobile, Middle East, 30%. <laughs> Virgin Hotels, 80%. So what? Virgin Sport. I mean, this so just what? goes on and on and on. Well, so The man what? is a business genius. And I've stayed on his home uh, island of Necker. Yeah, well I stayed done. on Necker. I went water skiing around Necker and didn't even well, fall off. Well, you, were you invited by Richard Branson? Yes, I was. And was he there? No. Yeah. Posty in Brum says, uh, hi, yeah. Mike, he says, does Porky remember D-I-V-O-R-C-E? Tell him not to sing it. Tell him not to sing it. I don't want it to rain. C-E, the words that got no, to says, me. No, it became final today, I think. It became final called. today, yeah. Remember, do you remember Billy Connolly's spat on that? Uh, uh, what's it? Not spat. Uh, take. Skit. 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 Yeah, remember, yeah, spat, yeah. spit on it. Yeah. He, that would be he, very nice. uh, he, he sang a version live on stage on one of his shows mm. where you couldn't tell the dog. Because the dog would have gone mad if oh, he right. knew his, uh, you know, his uh, master, his master and, and mistress. mistress were breaking up. Yes. You know, well, that is often a massive problem, isn't it? Yeah, the of course old, it uh, is. Yeah, uh, the, the, the tug of love between yeah. the, uh, the owners of the various pets. Yeah. Now, uh, here's this from Ken mm-hmm. in Jarrell. Uh, yeah. He says the best musicians don't necessarily make the best music teachers. Mm. The same principle applies to Gary Neville's unsuccessful tenure as manager at Valencia. Yes. Conversely, just look at the managerial careers of Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, top managers but mm. average players. Mm. I don't think that's the point at all, Ken. I think you've totally missed the boat on that. Well, one. I totally agree with you there. Now, by the way, I meant to yeah. mention this to you. Did you see that story about Eva Carnero quitting football? She's gone back to Gibraltar. She's going back to Gibraltar. I didn't realise yeah. she was a Gibraltarian. Uh, yeah, that's exactly she where she's been from. Yeah, yes. And yes. she's going to be uh, as a sports medicine and exercise medicine consultant. Doctor yes. Eva specialises in the treatment of athletes and other physically active individuals. Yes. Uh, sports and exercise medicine physicians have extensive education mm. in musculoskeletal medicine. Yes, that's right. So she's that's joining right. the Gibraltar Specialist Medical Clinic. Yeah. So I guess she's a doctor. Doctor after all. No, she's not, though. Yeah, is she, she is. She's going back to be a doctor. She's not, though. She's in it a medical clinic. Gibraltarian sports physician doctor, yes. Eva Carnero. Yes, it, being a sports physician doctor is not like being your local GP, believe me. I don't me. want to retread the whole argument. Yeah, well, but she's being well, called a doctor. You don't need to, because I'm right, honestly. She's being called a doctor. Yeah, right, yeah. So, Do you know who her husband does, by the way, for a living? Um, Jason De Carteret. Yeah, what is he? Do you know what he does? No. He's an explorer. Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Does he? Where's he going exploring? Well, I don't know. <laughs> just, Presumably, yeah. he's going to be exploring yeah. the rock. Yeah, the rock. Now. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. It'd be great though to be an explorer because you yeah. mean you imagine the number of yeah. times you'd, you'd have to. You wouldn't yeah. have to come up with an excuse. You'd be like, That's right, I'm yeah. just off to oh. do a bit of exploring, darling. Yeah, I'm off exploring. I'll be yeah. back in about three years. Yeah. Imagine if he comes home, he's got a gash on his face from his latest exploration. Oh, what happened? Oh, I ran into a Barbary ape. You yeah. know, at the top of the rock. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. It's a very yeah. strange thing. But good luck to him. Uh, is there anything left in the world to explore, by the way? Oh, yeah, there's loads of parts of the sea that haven't been explored. There's loads of parts, yeah, actually. All right, all right. Well, I mean, deepest, he hasn't got a submarine, The has deepest he? depths of the sea. Yeah, but he, has, he, doesn't, he doesn't say he's a, he's a mariner explorer well, or no, a submariner. But he, but, he, but he could be. Nah, rubbish, nonsense. Woodenhead uh, says, I 100% yeah. saw Mike Perry drunkenly hugging a lady at the Portsmouth 2 Mike show in the pub. No, I don't think you did. I think you did. We didn't well, go to the you? pub, did we, afterwards? Well, yeah, well, there was a bar. Oh, the bar next door, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if somebody comes up to me and says, oh, you know, Mike, you're wonderful and all that, your natural instinct is to say, oh, come on. But I hug very few people. I mean, the last I'm sure time... I'm very grateful for that. No, no, the last time I was pictured hugging was the rock chick at... Um, at, uh, at Cheltenham. At Cheltenham, Do you remember yeah. her name? Uh, her name was... <laughs> Cathy. Your memory's awful. Cathy? So awful. You sang a song to her because of her name. Uh, a song about a woman. About a woman's name. It wasn't Jolene. No. It wasn't Jolene. It no. was... Uh... How can you not remember this? And hang yet, on, hang when on. When I ask you something about 1975, yeah, hang on, you know every single detail. Hang on. That lady's name would have been uh, Lucille. No. No. Julia. Julia. Yes. That's about ten songs Man. now. Mountain child. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Now, listen, I'll tell you what I want to tell you about. I've come across a very dangerous situation. The country I mean? is being invaded by mad doves. What? Mad doves. Mad doves? Yeah, and do you know where they're coming from? When doves fly. Yeah, when doves fly. Now, that was Prince, wasn't it? You know. No, it was when doves cry. This is where you go to <laughs> when doves fly. That's 11 songs now. 
Yeah, isn't it? When doves cry. It's fly. when doves cry. When doves cry. OK, it's a great song. So this actually. is what it sounds like. That was Purple Haze, wasn't it? No. Purple Rain. No, uh, Purple Rain. That was his Purple Rain <laughs> era, wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> eh? Purple Haze, actually, Purple was... Purple uh, was Jimi Hendrix. Uh, yeah, I thought it was... Um, Why'd you shade a pale? No, that's Purple Harem. Purple Harem. Dear right, God. now then. Here we go. Now, 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 do you know where all these mad doves are coming from? I don't know. The mad dove sanctuary? No, no, no. What's happening is... Your roof garden. Uh, no, no. What uh, sort of doves are they? Well, this is the point, you see. This is what I've come across. It's, a, it's a phenomenon. I got it from my nature journals, really? and, and you should be aware of it. Um, when people get married now, yeah. the common practice the last two or three years is to release two white doves. Oh, really? Yeah. And, How and pathetic. Yeah, I, I, that's what I thought. I thought yeah. pretty pathetic. And further than that, it's been taken on rather morbidly by undertakers who now offer a service. Well, black doves. No, to release white doves at, white the, doves. at funerals. Yeah, really. Uh, if it's in a graveyard over the over the uh, coffin, no, you know, as, as you know, as, you know. As but we, I thought they were supposed to signify peace. You know, as we commit our brethren to the earth, you yeah. know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and then right. new life comes, and they release these doves. When right? doves fly. When doves fly. Uh, anyway. What's happened is, this has been going on for so long now, that a uh, huge... dove co- shortage. No, huge colonies of doves are now breeding. Right. Wild doves. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. And attacking people, are OK? Are they all white, though? Eh? Hey? Are they all white doves, then? They're all white, yeah, yeah, they're all white doves, yeah. So, according to the RSPB, that's the Royal Society for the Prevention of... Uh, sorry, Protection. Yeah. Prevention. Royal Society for Protection of Birds. Of birds yeah. The common pigeon was domesticated centuries ago and bred over generations to produce the ornamental white dove. Uh-huh. However, now that a number are being released into the wild in much greater numbers, mm. it's unclear what effect the species may have on its relatives, but we are getting now a crossbreed yes. of crazy doves. Well, half pigeon, half dove. Eh? Half pigeon, half dove. Yes, half pigeon, half it dove. sort of a grey colour. A sort of grey colour, and they're mad. You know, they attack things and attack people. Mm. Uh, the practice of releasing white doves at weddings and funerals has seen the white dove population multiply across the UK, creating similar pl- uh, uh, big problems for the environment. Really? Yeah. When was the last funeral you went to? I hate going to funerals. Well, that's not the question. I've turned down the last three funerals have that you? I uh, should have gone to. Really? I couldn't face it. Right. I don't Why like not? it. Why not? Eh? What, what do you mean you turned them down? I can't stand the, <laughs> the sense of mortality and... What do you uh, mean you turned them down? Well, I didn't go. Well, you just didn't go. Yeah, I didn't well, go. You didn't turn them down. Well, I, I, it wasn't I, like they were asking you to do a turn or anything. No, no, I had to think about it, and I thought I'm not going. Mm. Um, my last one, I've told you, about, it was my mate who was on the boat that got into Venice. Oh yeah, yeah. And, Why and did it, you, you should have gone to his? Well, it was in Great Sutton, which is like well, it's a very down the road to No, it's Great Sutton in uh, on the Wirral. Oh, see, I yeah. thought you meant it was near, you know, Little Sutton or whatever it is. Hey, Sutton in Stockbroker Belt. No, that's Sutton. That's just Sutton. That's a town called oh. Sutton. No, Great Sutton, I'm sorry. It's the same name, but it's uh, totally different. It's in, uh... oh, is that T-T-E-R-N? Is that a different spelling? No, no, no. It's Sutton, but it's called Great Sutton, and it's on the Wirral. Well, why are they so far apart? Oh, I don't know. There's loads of Suttons. There's another uh, Sutton in Yorkshire where that jail is, you know, a high security jail, Full Sutton. Is it? Yeah, Full it's called Sutton. Full Sutton, yeah. Yeah, seriously, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, look, um, so, no, I didn't go to that funeral. Well, the reason because... I asked you that is I wondered if you'd seen any of these doves being released. No. I've, I mean, I've not no. been to a funeral for a long time. No. And I've never seen doves being released at a funeral or a wedding. I hate funerals. I remember going to the funeral of our, my mate Pete, who was a photographer on the Daily Express. Yeah. Such a nice lad, you, you wouldn't believe it, and very popular with everybody in the office and had a load of girlfriends and all that. And yeah. he... Uh, uh, but a huge drinker, like uh, like a lot of us in those days. Mm. He went on a, a, um, a snorkelling holiday oh, yeah. with another photographer from the Daily Mail. Uh-huh. And they got back to the hotel and, um, tragically, they went out onto the balcony to have a nightcap. Right. And the rail had been taken away to be cleaned, brought right. back, placed where it should have been, but no. not screwed in. But not screwed in. Yeah, I'm no joking. And Blimey. Pete leaned on it, bang, and he went right over the balcony. Right. He was about four you know, floors up, right. smashed his head and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And do you know the amazing thing that happens when people are about to die? No. So they go down and get uh, poor old Pete, right, and they put yeah. him on the stretcher and they're carrying him into the hospital yeah. and all of a sudden he literally lurched forward and sat up on the stretcher yeah. and said, can I have a drink, please? Well, he smashed his head in. Uh, his head was all smashed in, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and he said, can I have a drink, please? And, the, you know, the, the medic sort of, you know, no, you know, he's delirious, he's delirious, you know, yeah. And he um, he died mm. uh, about half an hour later oh from a fractured skull. And you didn't go to his funeral? 
I did go to his funeral. Oh, you did? I went to his funeral. It was in Yorkshire, and I was still working in Manchester. Right. But it was very maudlin. You know, all his family turned up, his well, daughters. I mean, you expect a funeral to be. Oh, I hate it. Because it's I, maudlin. No, I don't. I just don't like it, honestly. Um, what I mean about him sitting up on the stretcher, right? Yeah. Another mate of mine, his older brother died. Yeah. His name is David. You told me a story about a guy sitting up before. It was well, a different guy. I'm, I'm back to, this is a different guy. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, I got a phone call from a mate, and he said, oh, I'm afraid David's passed away last hmm. night. I knew he'd been ill. I said, oh. He said, yeah, it was strange, really. I said, why? He said, well, he said he hasn't really been conscious for about a week. He said, and then... He hasn't been conscious for a week? For a week, yeah. Well, did he think he'd call me a doctor? No, no, he, they knew he was dying. He was he just oh, wasn't conscious. Oh, right. So he said, and then we got called to the bedside. The time, by the way. Uh, don't worry about the time. We got called to the bedside. Yeah. So we went there, and as we walked in and sat by the bed, after him not being conscious for a week, he suddenly sat up in bed and said... Let's all have a sherry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so my mate went off and got a bottle of sherry, came back. They poured a glass. They all had a glass each. And then he said, thank you. They lay down and died. Right. I mean, it's a ma- I've heard about this several times. Really? People who I've suddenly sit bolt else upright. Kind of stories. Yeah, and say, hello, or ask for a drink or something like that, or can I have a sandwich? And then they, boom, they just lie back and die. That sounds very suspicious to no, me. No, no. I've, I've, I've well, you're telling me it's happened twice. And hey, I'm, I've no, never no. heard of it happening any I've, other I've heard about it. I've, it happened to Gene Rook. Gene Rook was in a sort of semi-coma, you mm. know, the great writer for the Daily Express, and I was there. And we drove all the way down to Kent to see her, and she did exactly the same. Sat up in bed, said hello, and then died. It was amazing. Mm. Yeah. Shocking. It's an amazing phenomenon. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't know, but I don't know if it is. Whiskey River, take my mind. Don't let memory torture me. Whiskey River, don't run dry. Whiskey River, eh? Whiskey River, yeah. One of your favourites? Uh, well, it's not one I know particularly well. It's a Willie Nelson song, though. Yeah. I'm yeah. just giving you a bit of an education on country music because obviously you're, uh, you know, complete and utterly, uh, you know, relentless rant against it at the start of the show. Well, uh, has now changed. I like rock I think, and roll. Well, you've now listened to quite a few country songs. Yeah, you've they're liked, all right. You've liked they're every right. single one of them. But if I went into a bar in Nashville. I looked at the jukebox. I reckon only be about five out of a hundred records that I'd want so. to put money in and and uh, play. Yeah, but if you went into any place and looked at a jukebox, you'd only recognise about five of the songs anyway, because no, they'd only be on a couple of the greatest hits albums that you've got. No, don't be ridiculous. Well, who's your favourite band then, apart from the Beatles and ABBA? Well, Oasis. Oasis. Yeah, I like right. them. They're not around right. anymore. You know, Roxy Music. There's Roxy a few music. Roxy Music records. I like them okay. very much. Yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah, okay. really good. Uh, and the Electric Light Orchestra. I like okay. Yeah, no, well, it's like hardly them. rock and roll, is it? Well, it is rock and roll. And Queen, of course, like all the it's Queen really records. On the light side. Like all the Queen records. Listen, our favourite uh, newspaper, which is called New Day. The New Day, yes. The New Day. Yeah. Uh, the box on the back today, mm. the personal listography. Yes, what is lists it? Lists the last three people you hugged. Oh, that's a good one for you. You have, probably haven't hugged anyone, have I've you? never hugged anybody for years. No. So, uh, well, who were the last three, then? The last three would have been, well, a bunch of members of my family, I suppose. Right. My two sisters, my mum, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, haven't you hugged them recently? Uh, recently? Uh, I haven't seen them recently, I suppose. Two weeks well, ago. Well, well that's you quite know? recently. Yeah, I mean, I saw recent, your yeah. sister quite recently. Yeah, I was down right, in Bournemouth. Yeah. yeah, that's true, yeah. I gave her a hug. Yeah, oh, that's, that's very kind so of you. So have I hugged you. them more recently than you have, then? Um, maybe Emma might have... Your daughter might have been one of the ones I hugged really? uh, recently. Yeah? yeah. I always give her a hug and I greet her. Could be. I give my friend, you know, uh, uh, some of my friends at uh, TalkSport, who I work closely with, give them a hug occasionally. Who? Of the female well, you never variety. Hug me. No, I don't hug well, you. Well, you hug women at TalkSport. Of course I do. who? Well, you know, I don't want to go into That's pretty, uh, pretty specifics. Uh, bizarre. No, it's not. You don't hug people at work. Work colleagues. Well, you don't do get if you've hug. been working with them for like no. twelve years or something. Of course you do. No, I don't think so. Yes, you do. Honestly, that is, that is very Believe, sexist behaviour. Believe me. Believe me. Now. Um, Looking through this paper, by the way, mm. uh, I'm afraid I still don't believe it has an awful lot of merit. No. I'm sorry to have to say that as a former journalist, but I don't understand it. It's not getting any better, is it? Well, I don't understand how you're supposed to read it. I don't know where your eye's supposed to some, go. Some guy tweeted me yesterday, mm. um, and I'm sorry to call him that, but I, I can't remember his name. Mm. Uh, he said that they started off giving him 30 free copies at his work mm. uh, on day one, then they sent them 20, <laughs> uh, and now they send them four. Yeah, well, so I think that's uh, in- indicative of the print run. <laughs>
we are the two mics, and I've got a very strange uh, tweet here from John. Oh, yes. Who says this, right? I can't work this one out at all. Yes. He says, has Porky taken some sensible pills tonight? Uh, I've never heard such common sense. Wise words by the pork master. Thank you very much indeed. Is he talking about my campaign to I, save I the know. rabbit? I don't know what he's talking about. I think, uh-huh. he, I think he must have been uh, in some way uh, taking the old, uh, what, do you, what do you call no. that stuff? The devil's uh, buttermilk. Do you think he's taking the mickey and all that? No, I think, I don't so. think he is. I think you'll find that, you know, a lot of people, you see, when you get all cynical and, you know, what are you talking about? Oh, what are you going on about this for? Right. You, you, your cynicism is not reflected, with, you know, by the millions of people who listen to us mm. um, on a daily basis around the world uh-huh. who realise that I do have a point, and my point is that I have a care both for humanity and, additionally, and perhaps even more, yeah. for the world of the dumb animal. Yeah, exactly right. You know? Yeah, well, the yeah. dumb animal and you, I guess, have an mm. awful lot in common. Mm. Uh, here's one from uh, somebody who calls himself, Have You Seen The Time? Right. Uh, does Porky have any subject he doesn't have a journal on? Hashtag Porky's journals. Well, well, you see, once again, that, that's very cynical. The fact is that because I research and study, you know, a lot of what goes on in life, for my both for, to satisfy my own curiosity, mm. to uh, fulfil my knowledge quotient... And, quotient. Uh, yeah, quotient, that's right. And also to be able to converse properly with yourself... Uh, about issues our listeners are uh-huh. concerned about. I see. I do, I do study uh, writings. Of course I do. Of course you do. Yes. Alan says, I'm with Porky. Please save our bunny rabbits. Exactly. Um, here's one from Vid. Uh, he says, I think Mike Parry's new nickname should be uh, the Porky Pacemaker Parry. Why? I'm not sure why he says that. Why? I don't uh, need a pacemaker. Don't really know. Yet. Uh, mm-hmm. And how about this one from uh, mm-hmm. uh, Matty the Mackham? Yeah. Uh, he says, ha-ha, a rabbit with 18-inch teeth. Does he realise how long 18 inches is? No, yeah, I, I do. Think he does. No, I do. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's happened. I've Ian, seen it in the report. Ian in Rossendale says, Thing. Good morning, both mics. I think the species of rabbit Porky's talking about is the well-known saber-toothed rabbit. No, don't be daft. Somebody's taking the mickey there. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's absolutely true. It, um, you know, it, it can happen, and you have to be aware of it. Uh-huh. And uh, Ross says, will your admiral mate be joining the bunny campaign, Porky? Who? Your admiral mate, you know, your mate the admiral down at the old sailing club in Gosport. Well, what's he going to do with it? Well, I don't know. I mean, he, he looks after, he's a very influential figure, isn't he? He looks after boats and ships and Does things, he? you know. By the way, somebody tweeted on the earlier on yes. uh, last night about uh, whether you'd been to Gosport. I know you said you were there on yes. Saturday. Yes, But apparently there were some bad pictures on the news from Gosport saying that the wind had uh, done quite a bit of damage down there. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't when have I was not, there. Have you not, well, no, because the storm didn't hit till yesterday. No, well, exactly. Yesterday that's you right, yeah. I think that's where the crane went down, isn't oh, it? Oh, is that right? Well, I think it might well, have done. Well, don't you think you should have known that if it's gone down? In your place you live. Well, there's a lot of cranes around at the moment, a lot of building going on in Britain as a, uh, as a consequence of a boom in people needing places to live yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So I, I'm not aware that it was the crane in Gosport, but there is a very big crane in Gosport just a couple of blocks away from where my uh-huh. uh, penthouse is because they're building a new block onto well, the aren't you front. worried that it might have fallen on your apartment? No, then? it's not that close. Are you not, sure? No, no, it fell on somebody else's probably. Mm. But um, what I'm saying is it's uh, it's another part of the front of Portsmouth of Portsmouth Portsmouth Harbour, the opposite side, uh-huh. Gosport, Gosport Harbour, which is being built up. It's an up-and-coming area, you see, very oh, much see. so. Yeah, right. By the way, talking about Easter and all mm. that, right? Yes. Now, I have... Uh, Did made you have any Easter eggs? I didn't have any Easter eggs because I didn't brought, want to devour any chocolate. You haven't brought me one, have you? No, I haven't brought you one, no. no. Oh, no, oh, no, no buy. I mean, how, how many did you eat over I didn't eat any, actually. My kids have got so many, though. They've got about ten. Yeah, you went on an Easter egg hunt, didn't you? Yeah, uh, they did. And you couldn't remember where you'd put them, could you? Because no, you were bladderated. No, I didn't put them anywhere. I didn't. Yeah, put did. the, button, the Easter Bunny puts them in the Easter egg hunt. It's nothing to do with anything. Oh, uh, it's like Father Christmas delivering the presents, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. But you were so bladderated, you couldn't remember no, where you put the eggs for your true. kids. No, no it is no, true. I don't have anything to do this with it. This is a report I'm getting no. from Sussex. No, the Easter Bunny puts the Easter, you, the Easter eggs. Yes, I know the, the quotes Easter Bunny does, like quotes oh. Father Christmas. You know, puts oh, what, the presents at the bottom of your children's bed. Easter Bunny doesn't exist. Is that what you're saying? I'm not discussing that in case because we're a family show. Some youngsters might be listening. Exactly. Or now, Finn. what I, my reports were, Finn? my reports Finn, were, isn't it? Finn, 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 yeah, Finn, yeah, as in the end, eh? As in the end, Finn. What, what do you mean? French is Finn for the end, isn't it? Oh well, Finn lies in like what's F-I-N. on the back of a dolphin. No. Yeah. Finn. No. That's yeah. With one end. Yeah, that's right. Finn yeah. is with two ends. Finn's with two ends. Yeah. Yes. Finn, yeah. as in what's on the back of a dolphin. Yeah. Uh, and indeed some other uh, uh, creatures yes. of the deep. Yes. But also like a shark. A shark also has a fin, a yes. dorsal fin. That's right. But also mm. uh, fin, F I N, mm. means end in in French. If you ever watch a French film, it always says fin at the end, doesn't it? Fin or fini. 
No, it doesn't. It says Finn. No, Fini. It doesn't say Finny. It never Fini. says that. It always says Finn. Fini. No, I know Finny, but it's not yeah. the same. F I N I S. No. Anyway, sorry. What, what were we talking? Oh, yes, yeah, so about your research. My reports are mm. you go staggering out, bladderated not on true. Saturday night, halfway through your W R R W session, true. Absolutely which not incidentally true. for the uninitiated stands for mm. white wine, red wine, rose, whiskey. That's no. the sequence I in did which. That, uh, I did that once. That's right? the sequence no. which old MG drinks on a once. Saturday night. It's not true. Yeah, a bottle of white. No, it's not a true. A bottle of red. No. A bottle of rose. Not true. And then some whiskey shots. Shots to mm. finish the night off. It's not true. How blood rated you get doing that? He then staggers out into the night, two or three o'clock in the morning with the East Dregs no, uh, hang on. in a bag. No, I do not. He then have, goes around hiding them around the garden no, and in the meadow part, at the bottom I, of the garden. I do not take part in any planting of Easter eggs. And then when the children get up on Sunday and they're going out Easter egg hunting, oh, Daddy, 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 where's the eggs? You can't remember. Well, Too blood rated. Have you ever been on an Easter egg hunt? Hey? Have you ever been on an Easter egg hunt? Why would I go on an Easter egg hunt? Well, I don't know. You might learn something about how it operates. Because well, well, what you that's don't how do, it operates, isn't what it? What you don't do, if yeah. you're a child, is ask a grown-up where the eggs are. The whole point of the hunt yes. is that you find them. Yeah, I know, but I you mean... You don't go, where are they? And then you go, oh, look, they're over there. No, no. Plus, no, what... I don't know where they are because I don't put them out there. The Same Easter re- bunny puts them out I there. I realise that. What normally what happens plank. is... What normally happens is they take place in in a situation, which mm. I'll describe to you, where the adults are all sitting around trestle tables having a drink and all that, and the kids well, are out in the garden. there was nobody sitting around on trestle tables on Saturday. Scampering around. Andy Murray's temper tantrum, by the way. Scampering, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, scampering around trying to find the Easter eggs, and occasionally the adults will shout out a hint or a helpful sort of bit of direction, but you couldn't remember no, where they were. That's not true. That's a situation. Yeah, as usual, your sources are completely and utterly incorrect, uh, if indeed they exist at all. How about this from Stefan, who says, yeah, I on. once had a tame bunny rabbit in a hutch, but she went wild, escaped, and developed several underground burrows in my garden. Yeah. Doesn't say anything about growing teeth to be 18 Ooh, inches long. I'll tell you, it can happen. And uh, uh, here's a little uh, quiz for you. Yeah. Which rabbits were famous bank robbers, says Steve? Which, Roberts, which rabbits were famous bank robbers? Yeah. Rabbits. Rabbits. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Was there anything to do with who killed Jessica... Rabbit. Rabbit? No. No? No, she wasn't a bank robber. Oh, OK. No. Uh, it's Bunny and Clyde is the answer. Bunny and Clyde. I like it. I like though, a joke it? at this time of the day. I quite like that. Uh, listen, uh, talk about Andy Murray. Mm. My God, he smashed that uh, kit bag of his to he pieces. He did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he got really annoyed. Did he win what... in the end, by the no, way? No, I think he got, he got knocked out. That's why he was He won the his... first set on a... No, he lost the match. He won the first set on a tie break. Mm. He, he lost three consecutive games in the second. But no, he lost four consecutive games, but then won three to come back. But he lost the game overall, did he? Uh, well, of course he lost the game overall. Uh, what do you mean overall? Is that a new tennis term? Well, you know He what lost I mean. the game overall. Lost the game no, overall. he lost. Right, he lost. That's okay. it. Right. Now, listen, I told you I was going to tell you about, you yeah. know, just reflecting on Easter. Yeah. I mean, I said to you I would only ever eat fish on a good Friday. Did you know, did you know that people queued up to 200 yards away mm. from the most popular fish and chip shop in Britain on Good Friday, yeah, right. just to make sure they got their, their Good Friday fish and chips. Well, they're idiots or something. This place is called Coleman's uh, Fish and Chip Shop. Coleman's. Of South Shields. South Shields. You know where South Shields is? Of course I know where it is. Where is it? It's up in the northeast of England. Yeah. It's, it's, off... it's near Newcastle. It's on the... There's ob... North Shields and there's South Shields. It's on the other side of the River Tyne to North Shields. That's right. You've got North Shields on the north bank. Would it be on the south side? South Shields That's on the south bank. That's south. And it's where, it's where the Tyne fact, Tunnel... One of, our, uh, one of the guys that came to our show oh, yeah. was from North Shields. Was he? Okay, and in fact, yeah. he's a guy that rings in from time to time. Oh, OK. So He gave, he gave me a whole kind of t- uh, uh, geography lesson yeah. on North Shields. The Tyne Tunnel yeah. uh, goes from North Shields, uh, from South Shields to North Shields. We didn't okay. go through that, did we? No, we didn't go through that because you have to divert off the A1 and go, yeah. oh, I think it's the A19. There's a lot of roadworks, I seem to remember, up there when we went last time. Well, I the went on the train. The, yeah, well, there weren't any roadworks on the train, but no. I mean, on the A1, there was all sorts of, uh, uh, um, you know, roadworks. So you got down in the car, did you? I went in the car, yeah. In the car, OK, I remember yeah, I parked across the street from the hotel. I remember now. Right, now then, uh, what I was going to say... St James's what I was going to say is, what about this? Customers waited for up to an hour to get their meals from a popular family-owned chippy founded in 1926. What's wrong with people? One diner said, it's worth it. Nothing would stop me from breaking the tradition of fish and chips on Good Friday, even if I had to wait all day. The uh, Coleman's place that I'm talking about, yeah. originally set up as a beach shack, Coleman's in South Shields, Tyne and is famous in the region for its cod and chips. Uh-huh. Well-known visitors who have eaten there include Britain's Got Talent judge David Walliams. <laughs> <laughs> for some is unknown that, reason. Is that where it starts? Is I don't that, know. Is that the I top of the list? And former Prime Minister Tony Blair. Oh, My great. God, I'm amazed I was shut down if Tony Blair went there. Oh, that um, was in his days as a Newcastle fan, wasn't I it? suppose so, yeah, yeah, when he used to sit behind the uh, goal. How come your mate, uh, what's his name, Miliband, hasn't been there? Well, I don't know. When he was at Sunderland. He's Sunderland. Yeah. Um, 
And there's another one, apparently, you know when they do in that... Tymouth, where they have the same situation. For yeah. some unknown reason, the fish up there is brilliant. Well, because it's on the sea. Yeah, that's true. Be there's plenty of sea in this country. Uh, there is plenty of sea, but that's yeah. why fishing, uh, sort of, you know, fishing, eating is best on the coast, isn't it? Of course it is, because the, the fish is so know, fresh. Down in Hastings, they've got some very good fishing ships as I'll well. i tell you what, there's a fish and ship shop in Gosport, which is, I think, the best in the country. Really? It's when right... was the last time you went there? Uh, last uh, Saturday. Really? And it's so right... fish on Saturday? On Saturday. And yes. Friday. And Friday. What it's about Sunday? Would you have Sunday? Sunday, let me think. Sunday, what day was Sunday? Oh, it was Sunday. yesterday. Sunday, I didn't, I had a light plate of fresh meat because I, <laughs> it was Easter Sunday and I like working on Easter Sunday fresh because meat. God says endeavour is good. What sort of fresh meat did you have? I had lean ham, uh-huh. uh, lean roast beef. Uh-huh. And Anything else? Yes. Bread? Uh, no, boiled potatoes. <laughs> What's your problem? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing. Sounds like a fine it? lunch to What's me. Wrong with that? Sounds brilliant. I had barbecued and lamb tomatoes. kebabs. Tomatoes. I had barbecued lamb kebabs, which were fantastic. Yeah, you put them Absolutely on. Absolutely fantastic. They, they, they looked very complicated to me when you put a picture of them on uh, Twitter. Not complicated at all. Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why you had to hide away for so long. It's always a very cheery song, that, when you hear it. It was fantastic. Where were you then when that first uh, hit the charts? Um, you know, I think I was probably in America. What era was it and all Um, that kind of stuff? Was it in the 80s? No, it was before then. Was it? It was definitely... I was working on the Evening Chronicle in Newcastle. Well, what I, year did it come out? I went there in 76, and right. I remember the Pig & Whistle, the pub okay. opposite in a Big Market, Yeah, and that was on the that was the one that was played most on the jukebox. So I reckon it was about 76, 77, oh, okay. something well, like that. OK, well, in that case, I would have been still in London, but then I probably was listening to music other than the Electric Light Orchestra, really? because the yeah, Electric okay. Light Orchestra at that time were... Uh, I don't know, they would be, I suppose, on top of the pops and stuff like that. Yeah. But when I was uh, 16, 17, 18, uh, I was yeah. listening to things like Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin's last ever concert at Nebworth, well, well, you told me. Which anyway, was the reason we played a bit of ELO is that at 68, Jeff Lynn is taking the Electric Light Orchestra back on the road. Uh-huh. Now, you yeah, say. They're playing the O2, I think, aren't they? Uh, well, they start their tour in Liverpool on June the 15th, yeah. I've just seen here. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, they start the tour in Liverpool on April the 5th. Okay. They conclude in uh, Glastonbury on June the 26th. Right. So I don't well, know. Well, they're playing on April the 9th. I don't know why. Well, we should know that because, I mean, almost everything else seems to be going on on April the 9th. Oh, that's right, on April the 9th. uh, uh, The uh, Manchester Dance House. We're doing the Dance House in Manchester and it's the day of the Grand National. It is. So I bet they weren't on in Liverpool on the day of the Grand National. I wouldn't have thought so. Well, they wouldn't be in Liverpool, no, but they might be somewhere else. Oh, no, of course, they're in Liverpool on April the 5th. No, you said that. So what day of the week is that, 5th? That's a Tuesday? Well, it's four days before the Saturday. Uh, Tuesday the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. It's the 5th. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday night. I wouldn't yeah. go to a concert on Tuesday night, actually. Why wouldn't you? Well, because I can only get into sort of relaxing, socialising sort of on a Saturday, that's all. I don't do really? it during the week, yeah. Now, um, well, I'm sure Jeff Lynn will be very disappointed you're yeah, not yeah, going yeah. to be there. Now, what I was going to say is, so he's going back on the road. He says, you know, um, he said uh, in, a, in a recent interview, which I saw, he said, I've become cool. Isn't that great? At 68 years of age, Jeff Lynn declares he's got cool, but he's a little See, baffled think, about it. I think he's been cool for quite a long time. Yeah. But probably not that cool during the 70s when he was in the Electric Light Orchestra. Yes. But, but now, because he's become this kind of giant of, of the music business, yes. because, you know, he came up with the whole Travelling Wilburys thing. Oh, absolutely. He's become this mega well, producer. Well, George Harrison apparently came up with that. Yeah, well, I mean, it, yeah. was, it, was, a, it was a combination of, sure. uh, of thoughts. Uh, of, of of George Harrison, of Tom Petty, yeah. of Bob Dylan, uh, but Jeff Lynne was kind of the guy that brought it all together, yeah. and he was the guy that kind of produced it all. That's that's absolutely right. Mm. One reason he says he might have become cool is because recent people he's worked with, he's duetted with, have included Ed Sheeran, yeah. the Foo Fighters. Yeah, they're they're pretty contemporary, aren't they? Uh, they certainly are contemporary. Yeah. There's uh, lots of words you could use to describe. Well, them. they're no good. Well, they're very good. Yeah. Well, but so... they kind of came out of Nirvana. Uh, Nirvana, Nirvana with, a, with a sort of grunge band. Yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, okay. that, uh, that unfortunately, I lost thought they their were a modern band. Lead. Well, what do you mean modern? Well, Nirvana's been going on for two decades. Well, Nirvana are not around anymore. That's so what I mean. The Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl, who's the you know the, yes. the guy in the Foo Fighters, came from Nirvana. Well, Dave Grohl performed a Beatles song with uh, ELO. Uh, yeah. Sorry, with Jeff Lynn yeah. at the Grammys. He did. Uh, That's true. And Daft Punk sampled "Evil Woman." Yeah. 
Daft Punk, they, they're well known, aren't they? Yeah, they are well known, yeah. OK. Anyway, the point of the story is that when ELO, when he, Jeff Lynne takes ELO on the road... Yes. ...of course, none of the original band members have to be with him, do no, they? presumably not. Does he take an orchestra as well? I mean, does he have the strings and all the rest of it? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I well, assume... Why don't you know the answer? Well, the only way you can get the sound of ELO is to have all that, so I assume he well, must, yeah. but yeah. you can do it through a computer, though. Well, I suppose you could. Anyway, the point of my story is... What is what the my story, point of story is? Story? When ELO was formed, the lead man in ELO was Roy Wood, wasn't it? Uh, well, I, no, I think Jeff Lynne was always the lead man. Well, no, I, th- I think... I mean, I, Roy Wood was in Wizard. Yeah, 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 but that was after. No, yeah. See, what happened was, they had the move, right? Yeah. And then that broke up because yeah. Roy Wood... I don't uh, think Roy Wood was ever in the Electric Light Orchestra, was he? Uh, he was. I'm going to tell you the story. Go on. Goodbye, Blackberry Way. By the way, I've got a note on your singing oh, yeah. from Woodenhead, mm-hmm. uh, who must have uh, been over-imbibing, I think, Go tonight. On. says, whoever is dissing Mike Parry's singing must be deaf. Exactly. His melodic, beautiful voice brings happiness and joy to the world. Thank you very much indeed. I think he's got his tongue in his cheek. No, so. no, 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 not at all. Anyway, the point is, so, so Roy Roy Wood wanted to move on from that. Roy Wood was a genius, by the way, in my view. I mean, some of the songs he wrote, Goodbye Black Rue, Call the Fire Brigade, mm. uh, Here We Go Around the Mulberry well, Bush, was he, it? Did he not, here We Go Around the Mulberry Bush, wasn't it? Or he wrote that. Mulberry Tree that, or something? That dates back to the old days of the plague. Here we go the around Black the Death. All oh, right, OK. That was the Black Death song. Was it the Black Death because song? Because a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down, was about the Black Death. Oh, was it? OK. And so another sure one he wrote, write that one. another one he wrote, which I thought was his best one, which people don't remember, was um, That's the Road That's Over There, It's Going Out to Nowhere. That's the road don't that's sing. over there, it's going out. Anyway, point of the story is, yeah. I believe the history of it is that he formed the Electric Light Orchestra because he wanted to make this musical spectacular, you yeah, know what I mean, and right. move on a bit from just being a four-man group, yeah. like the move was. OK. Uh, uh, he got together with Jeff Lynne, mm. but Jeff Lynne's, you know amazing talent and ability to write songs and produce songs as well, suddenly came to the fore, so he and Roy Wood clashed with each other in front of, I think there were 16 members of the Electric Light Orchestra when they started, right? And apparently they started having terrible rows in the studio and and on stage sometimes. Yeah, they made one sort of album together. Was that uh, right? And then then Roy Wood departed, apparently. That's right, because I think he flounced out. I mean, you know, maybe I've got that wrong, but... I think he said, you know, don't you know whose band this is? And right. I think Jeff Lynne said something, well, you know, I want to be creative. I'm like, right, all right, I'll leave it to you. Right. And I think Roy Wood thought that maybe, without his support, it wouldn't be the group that it became. Yeah, I think so. And it became a fantastic worldwide success mm. with uh, Jeff Lynne at the helm, you yeah, know what I mean? Did. No, I think that's absolutely right. And, no. Ro- and Roy Wood did, you're right, he then formed Wizard and they had that Christmas hit, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, you know... Um, I wish it could be Christmas, wish it Christmas every day. Every day. Yeah. But I don't remember too many other Wizard hits. I, I think he had think one other number one, actually. See My Baby Jive. See My Baby Jive, absolutely right. Yeah. And then... I think Roy Wood just disappeared off the scene altogether, didn't he? Well, I don't know what he's doing now, but he must be looking at all this publicity that old uh, uh, Jeff Lynne's getting and, and, yeah. and kicking himself. But I wonder why he didn't come back to the fore and start writing and producing great songs again, because he was a terrific yeah. songwriter, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, sometimes you can get so fed up, I suppose, with what's turned out, and if you keep being reminded of how yeah. the person that you've left behind is doing so much better, yes. you might just go, I'm not, I can't be bothered. Might be way, he where... probably makes a fortune every, every year out of that Christmas I'm season. I'm sure he does, yeah, it might weigh you down. The last reported sighting of him, that I know of, uh, our very good friend Andy Townsend mm. was with the Villa squad because, of course, he's a, they're all Midlands boys. They're all from Berry, yeah. And, yeah, was with the Villa squad after a game in a very nice sort of you know country house hotel mm. in uh, in Warwickshire oh, yeah. on the way back from the Villa game. Shakespeare country, Shakespeare country, very much so. Mm. And they were all sat round the table, and there was a bloke standing at the bar, um, simply standing there on his own drinking lager. And they had a look at him again and said, you sure that's not Roy Wood? You know, the guy from the wizard. on his face. No, of course not, no. But but the reason he used to put all that on his face, by the way, he was incredibly shy Mm. and he couldn't go on stage. Well, maybe that's why he never came back onto the stage. Maybe, maybe. He was incredibly shy. He didn't like the, uh, you know, publicity. He just liked making the music, really. So anyway, uh, Andy got up and went over and said, excuse me, you, yeah, yeah, I'm... He said, oh, it's very nice to meet you, you know, uh, lads from Villa here, you know, or big fans and all, you have to come and join us. He said, no, thank you. He said, it's very kind of you. And Andy said, well, can we get you a drink? He said, yeah, I'll have a drink, thanks a lot. So he got him a pint of lager, right. and that was it. And did he leave then after that? Well, they, they, he made it clear he wanted to be left alone. Mm. So Andy went back it's and s- like sat down. No, it's not like me at all. I'm no, very you don't like to, No, you sold us. You don't like no. talking to people in pubs. So well, to you. not if they're going to sort of drive me crazy, obviously, you know. But, um, but anyway, so Andy went back and sat down. 
And the lad just said, no, he said, he said he's very kind. He said, thanks for the drink. He mm. just, he's, he's doing things. But, but I said to him, I said, oh, well, I said, what, was he reading or did he have his uh, phone with him? Was he check? He said, no, he was just standing there drinking. Mm. I said, you know, I mean, that takes something, actually, to stand in a bar on your own and just drink lager. Well, that's what you do. No, I don't. I don't. Well, you I... sit somewhere on your own. No, I, the thing is, Mike, I've always got things to do. I'm either reading something or writing something, I'm on the phone yeah, or I'm but you're checking still, things. you're still on your own, though. Yeah, but what I'm saying is he didn't need any sort of prop. Mm. He just stood there, drunk lager, and was in, lost in thought, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. And, I, you know, I think you've got to be quite sort of self-confident to do that. Surprisingly, he was oh, very you shy. Mean, when you go into a pub and, and you're on your own, you pretend to be doing things. No, 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 I'm doing things. Look as if you're not there with anyone. No, 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 I have no problem standing at the bar and having a drink if I want to. Mm. If I want to muse on the world in my own head, I oh, will. OK. OK? Graham says this, Porky, here we go around the Mulberry Bushes by traffic. Traffic. Hashtag plank. Traffic, thank you. Well done. Right. Yeah, yeah. Here I've we go. More, uh, well, yeah. I don't think it was that song. Yeah, but... I told but, you, that one goes back to the days of the So plane. what were the move ones? Blackberry Way? No, I don't know. I haven't got time. Not interested. Call the Fire Brigade. I don't care. Well, you should care. I don't care. It was great in the well, British are you going to go and see uh, Electric Light Orchestra then? Should uh, we might, go? Might do. Really? Might do, might do. Yeah, I, think might be, f- I think you'd be shocked at how much the tickets cost. They'll probably offer us a couple of free tickets. I don't want a free ticket. Well, I do. I know you do. That's all you ever want. Are the two mics. Lots of uh, conflicting opinions coming in on uh, your singing abilities, by the way. Right, good. Uh, one from uh, uh, somebody called Steve, who says, yes. keep up the wonderful singing, Mr Parry. Keeps me awake for the Porky quiz. Thank you. Uh, Hackman, on the other hand, says, please, 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 stop singing, Porky. I'm not feeling good just now, and your singing will tip me over. Mm-hmm. Hashtag tone deaf. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, William says, kind. hope you're doing the Selco Predictor today. Got mm-hmm. pen and paper ready so I can enter the opposite score of what Porky predicts. Oh, really? That's very nice, yeah. isn't it? Um, listen, it's April the 1st today. It certainly is. And I have to say, I think the idea now, the old April Fool's joke story, is a bit old. Have you spotted it? Yeah, I have, yeah. This this one is so obvious. It's on page three of the Daily Mail. Oh, you Mail. seem to have forgotten that you tricked me last year. Yes. Uh, which I thought was pretty uh, below the belt, to oh, be honest, it was easy. By giving me toothpaste in some Oreo cookies. I did, yeah. And then you gave easy. me some poison tea, I think, as well. Yeah, I did, yeah. But People were actually entreating me to, mm. to, to, to get you back and yeah. play, play uh, revenge. I'm too smart, mate. What they don't get is that my revenge goes on constantly. Oh, yeah, that's that right, yeah. I treat yeah. you like I do. Yeah, anyway, here's, uh, scant regard. here's the lead story on page three of a national newspaper. Yeah. Now, that's a real Bond girl. Has O.O. Olivia been lined up to play 07? And they say, the name's Bond, Jane Bond. Broadchurch star Olivia Coleman is set to make history by becoming the first female 07. The Daily Mail can exclusively reveal that 42-year-old Miss Coleman will take over from Daniel Craig for the next movie, currently known only as Bond 25, in a controversial move sure to outrage many die-hard fans. Yeah. So the problem so you is... you reckon that's not true, then? Well, the problem is, they move from a headline saying, has... Oh, oh, Olivia been lined up. Yeah. And an intro which says, uh, set to make history, into a second paragraph which says, we can exclusively reveal Miss Coleman will take out from Daniel Craig. So yeah. I'm afraid it's all over the place. Yeah, right. It's clearly not true. And, I mean, it's always, I mean, funnily enough, the Daily Ooh. Mail, which is a newspaper without a sense of humour, right, yeah. is always the one that does April Fool's. It is, it is, yeah, it's true. I'll tell you the other paper we should look at is The Guardian, because they normally do one as well. Yeah, they do, actually. Yeah, we'll I mean, look quite, at The whole that, paper's yeah. an April Fool, actually, but that's it, another story. Yeah, well, you know. That's See if you can spot one in there. Uh, i tell you what, um, I wonder if we can... See, it would be very difficult, wouldn't it, to spot an April Fool's story in our favourite paper, New Day. The New Day? <laughs> well, well, do you know what they've got on the back Because most, most, most of it is a joke anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are three things for the back page, their personal listography. Uh, this will be a tough one for you. List the last three books you've read. Yeah, blimey. Yeah, amazing. Well, you were always reading books. You're saying you are always getting sent them in the post. Well, I, re- I read journals. You read the one about the bridges uh, being built in India, right? Yeah, I did, yeah, that yeah. That was fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you read one recently, did you not, about um, James Dean? James Dean, yeah, yeah, I read that, yeah. You didn't read the whole book, though, presumably. No, I don't read the whole book. What I do is I can speed read, and uh, by speed reading yeah. and looking at the uh, chapter titles... It's the only thing you do at speed. ..and the bibliography to see who's in it, I can, uh, generally speaking, find out uh, what the salient points within a book are, you know no, what I mean? OK. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but, I mean, it'd be difficult to find one in here because I'm never sure whether... They're having a joke anyway, to be mm. honest. You know what I mean? Well, the producer, Mr Levine, tells me that on page 11, which is very difficult to find, because when oh, you yes. look for the page numbers, they're yeah. all kind of buried away. Yeah. You can't find them, right? 
Uh, so why is it? It says why your cat might be telling you something in Scouse. Mm, he reckons that's a. Uh, oh, no, I've seen that story actually. He reckons that I might saw, be an, s- an April Fool. I saw that story yesterday in another publication, but it talked about cats speaking in a Geordie accent. Oh, really? To be honest, yeah. All right. So I think that's probably true. Mm. Uh, I see here, by the way. Let's all hope for a speedy rose return for Beverly. I totally agree with that. Corrie actress Beverly Callard has had some gruelling soap storylines as barmaid Liz McDonald, but her personal life has also been blighted by darkness. Now she's taking time off uh, from the show yeah, the due jinx. to uh, struggles with illness. So, yeah. I've told you. Mm. Well, you How know, about this one? Report calls for a national, I wish sleep, the very best. Uh, national sleep strategy. That could be an April Fool in The Guardian. Uh, oh, it, no, no, that's in... The average that's... person in Britain is undersleeping by about an hour a night. Yeah, no... You're I've... undersleeping by about five hours a day. No, I've seen that somewhere else. Britons are missing out on Are you total... finding yourself sleeping more, by the way, now that you're not drinking? Hang on. Britons are missing out on a total of one night's sleep every week, it says uh, yeah. in another version of that. Um, do, what do you say? Am I sleeping better? Uh, yeah, you're sleeping better, yeah. Well, I've never slept badly. Yeah, I but sleep... you don't sleep, though. Well, I sleep as much as I want to sleep. And, you know, if it's only two or three hours uh, a day, that's fine by me. It doesn't bother me. Honestly, it really doesn't bother me. It bothers you, because when you haven't had enough sleep, you can't, um, you know, manufacture your thoughts properly. Yeah, listen, do you know there's a police force, right? Yeah, I've heard there's a police force. There are many police forces. Which one are you referring to? Who are trying to, believe it or not, Hmm. um, uh, introduce a system where when somebody's arrested and, you know, bungled in the back of a police van and taken off to the police station and put into a cell to be charged with whatever offence they've committed... Yeah. Uh, they're then given a form before they're released to ask how their treatment by the police was. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I know, I know. Where it's, is this? You, you laughed. I, or is it sort of say, like, how did we do? Um, it's a bit like when you follow those vans. That's right, yeah. You know, how's how my am I driving? driving? Yeah, I think that's pathetic. If I, I, if I was a lorry driver and they put one of those on the back, I'd just black it out. I'd yeah. get some black paint and black it out. The idea that you are, your job, your, you know, your job, the job you're doing each day to earn your living is subject to examination by millions of other people is outrageous. Mm. It's an outrageous attack I mean, on your I, civil liberties. I can't imagine if anyone has ever actually rung that number. No. To say, by the way, you're driving. Can you imagine what would happen? No, but somebody go at the other end going, get lost. Can you imagine your somebody... Your driver's not driving very well. Somebody ringing and saying, oh, I think your driver's driving really well. I thought I'd just ring you up and let you know. Yeah. It's, it's designed, isn't it? It's designed for, you know, people who've got a, a grudge to bear to ring up and complain about the driver. Mm. I, I would, honestly, I would, I would, uh, I would screw it out. Yeah. Now then, um, what it says here is it's the Independent Police Complaints Commission... Yes. Who well, say which police forces doing this? Well, the Independent Police Complaints Commission covers all police forces. This yeah. is the point I'm saying. Cops should ask suspects for feedback if they physically restrain them. Um, the plans go on to suggest officers tell anyone they lift how to make a formal complaint mm. if they don't feel their treatment by the police has been right. Yeah. Good God. I know, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, the idea was revealed in the IPCC, that's the Independent Police Complaints Commission. That's right. 94-page Police Use of Force report, oh, yeah. which has just been published. Mm. Oh, good God. Last year, there were 23,000 assaults on officers in England and Wales. That was 63 each day. Did they get asked how they felt about things? No. So Mark Smith, who's the Essex Police Federation chairman, said, if you're attacking police and being arrested, why should we then be asking you... Oh, did we use the right force against you? Are you happy with the way we treated you? This is simply opening the floodgates for false complaints. It's inviting people to make a load of money, isn't it? It's inviting people to say, actually, I'd quite like to sue you. Yeah. It's it's utterly pathetic. And, you know, when Sandra comes on from Australia, she often talks about the PC brigade down there. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got it worse up here. Well, I don't know, actually. I mean, I think it might be being reversed slightly. Well... They seem to be suffering more down there. Now, how about this from Gerald in Glasgow? He says, hi, guys, do you know the best side uh, of Get the Fire Brigade? It's a belter. I think he means the B-side. The B-side, what is it? Get the fire. He doesn't say. Well, can we, could you tell us what the song oh, is, Gerald, please? Tell us, let us know. Tweet us, uh, text us in again. And uh, here's one from, uh, yeah. uh, uh, where are we? Nobody some doesn't give a name. Alert, alert, Porky's actually right about something. Roy Wood did indeed create ELO. He had one post-Wizard hit uh, called Forever. Forever. Drummer Bev Bevan uh, was in uh, oh, sorry, was in yeah. the move and, and then ELO and still plays. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, that's that's interesting. I thought it happened like that. Tony Manchester says the police satisfaction survey for people that are arrested is an April fool. No, it's not, honestly. Are you sure? I'm, I'm certain. Where are you reading that? Uh, I read it in uh, one of my um, social awareness uh, journals about... <laughs> 
story, what's your problem? Well, are you saying you read it in one of your social awareness I did, journals? about three days ago. Oh, so it's not an April Fool? No, it's not an April are Fool. Are you certain? I'm certain. I'm certain it's not an April Fool, honest to God. Really? It was, it, it's something's actually been published in that report. I know it sounds like an April Fool, yeah. and, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if it had been, but it was published a few days so ago in, in, a, in a, a police journal. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. A police journal, there yes. you go, so it can't yes. be uh, untrue. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The best of the two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. What a great song that is. Another great Cheers. country song. Cheers, a great now, song. Uh, a couple of people want to point something out. Yes. Uh, here's one from Davey in Canterbury. Yes. He says, guys, be careful not to make the common mistake of mixing up country with country and western. Mm. Two totally different genres. Oh, is that Eagles right? uh, are the most talented country band. Oh, well, I yeah, see. I mean, you say Crosby, yeah. Stills and Nash are a country mm. band, mm. Uh, but they're not necessarily a country and western band. Well, country with... and western is a load of guys who, like, sound like, a, you know, they're sitting on hay bales. Yeah, yeah, but and, that's still uh, very successful, and some of it is still very good. And wearing cowboy hats yeah. and... Uh, trouble is, I don't think you've quite got... Strumming the... Guitars. You haven't quite got the genre down, have you? Oh, Do you know I, think what I've got, about? I think I've got it down. What about Little Feet, Gareth says? They're truly the best country Little band. Feet? Never Little heard Feet? Never heard of them. Who are they? You've never heard of Little Feet? No. You've never heard of Lowell George? Who? you never heard of Fat Man in the Bathtub? No, of course I haven't. We'll Who's have Fat Man in the one. Bathtub? I'm going to play Fat Man in the Bathtub for you. What a load of for rubbish. For your triangular What is he? Who is he? Uh, it's the name of one of their songs. Uh, uh, Fantastic uh, band. I saw them Which band? Which band? Little Feet. Little Feet? Yeah. Are they American? Of course they're American. Yeah, they're from the deep south. Okay, they've had a few hits in this country. Uh, they have actually. Yeah. Have they? If they had, had you may uh, not have got their greatest hits, but they've had a few hits. Mate. I'd have known about it. Don't yeah, worry of course. about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried. Yeah. Anonymous yeah. says, "Does Porky know anything about European club football? Comparing Aston Villa to Spain's third biggest club, Valencia. Yeah. What a plank." Well, I tell and, you uh, something. Aston Villa, properly managed, could be the third biggest club in this country. Of course, <laughs> they could. Well, I'll tell you what. In our Here's lifetime, they've finished as runners up in the Premier League. Yes, yes. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Gary so I'm Neville. not going to be uh, dismissed like that. I'm sorry. I don't know why you're Aston- taking Aston- it so personally. Aston Villa are a very big club indeed. Taking it very personally. A bigger club than Valencia, actually. No, they're not. They are. Uh, here's one from Becky who says Gary Neville's a shoe in for Talksports Clash of the Titans. I need to get rid of those non-footballers and journalists off the panel who don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I agree what do you with make that. Of that. I agree with that. You should have only knowledgeable people in there. I, I fall into so, the knowledgeable category. So you should throw yourself on your sword and no. make way for Gary Neville. I think Definitely not. Saying. Definitely uh, not. And uh, retro uh, guy says, was Porky known in France as Le Planck? <laughs> <laughs> That's so amusing, that. It is funny. I think I'll it? just roll over it. and die laughing. Yeah, I think mm. we might do. Be yeah. careful of your heart, though. Only one third of it works. Exactly. Remember that. Do you come from a land down under? A women go and men wonder. Can't you hear, can't you hear the thunder? You better run, you better take cover. We are of the two mics, and I'm delighted to say that music can only signal one thing. Mm. It's the return of Sandra Lee, uh, who we speak to on a very regular basis. Indeed. She's our favourite Australian, of course. Yes. And uh, we're going to find out uh, what she's got for us this mm. week. Sandra, very good morning to you. Good day, chaps. How are you? Very well indeed, and all the better for having you on the show, Sandra. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you, Mike. No, it's a pleasure. Now, I tell you what, we're going to be uh, talking... Uh, sorry. He's taking over now, are you? No, no, I'm sorry. Well, I, you... I thought you'd said hello to Sandra. Well, I have said hello. Well, well, do you want to say hello what again? You, what are you doing? What, what am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing now? Well, considering that I'm a student of history and you're not, uh-huh. I thought I, I was going to say to Sandra, oh, okay. we want to discuss the Captain Cook situation. The Captain because, Cook situation. Because he's been branded a thief and an invader. He has indeed, yeah. This is, a, this is some kind of academic nonsense, Sandra, right? That's exactly what it is. And once again, it's the politically correct brigade are out in force saying that mm. we have to re, uh, rename um, what Captain Cook did in 1770. It's not, it was not the great discovery of Australia's east coast, but it mm. was an invasion. Mm. And, uh, but it gets even crazier. You know, you'd think this was an April Fool's, April Fool's joke, but it's not. So we then have to talk about Australian history as pre-invasion history and post-invasion history. And this one is even crazier than that. Mm. We're not allowed to call Aboriginal people Aborigines anymore. We have to call them Indigenous Australians, which when I looked at the dictionary, Aborigine does mean the first, in, uh, the first <laughs> inhabitant. So yeah, well, aren't, they, aren't they saying that the reason mm. they can't call them Aborigines is because they, they might offend some other uh, Indigenous populations? which are, are hitherto forgotten about. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing. Yeah. And we're also not allowed to um, say that the Aboriginal people have um, been on this 
great continent for 40,000 years, which is what the accepted history is. Yeah. But we have to say they've been here since the beginning of the dreamings. The dreamings? What? What's that? <laughs> That's exactly right. It's crazy. Yeah. The dream time. It, w- w- so it, w- Aboriginal have, um, you know, their dream time. That's what they call sort of their philosophy. Yeah. And uh, we're not allowed to call it dream time anymore because that implies that it's all over, Red Rover. Mm. So you've got to call it the dreamings, which means it goes on forever. Mm, good God. Uh, well, some of the some of the things I can add to that, Sandra, and that's a very comprehensive um, uh, layout. Thank you very much indeed are that you're not allowed to use words like um, Australia was not settled peacefully, it was invaded, occupied and colonised, and words such as primitive, simple, native and prehistoric are described... We could use all those words to describe you. ...are described as less... (laughs) Sandra, what are you laughing at? He only does that to get a cheap laugh. Didn't you realise that? You know, I thought you were a woman of substance. Huh? Now, let me just continue. Uh, complex and yeah, diverse you're, you're, societies. We're, we're interviewing Sandra about, you know, a conversation. Yeah. Why are you reading? Well, you're well, going to take up all the time with I, reading nonsense. I'm, I'm having an historical conversation with Sandra. All mm. you're doing is putting in your pathetic two cents worth every now and then mm. just to try and get in on the conversation. Yes. Um, I mean, the other issue here, I suppose, Sandra, is that this is supported by a gap a guy called uh, Jackie Huggins, who's an Aboriginal historian. So the the Aboriginals, or the Aborigines, have clearly taken on this ridiculous sort of liberal propaganda and are now being brainwashed into believing it's true. Liberal what? Liberal what, do you say? What, what do you mean? What did you say? Liberal what? What did you call it? <laughs> I don't know, but propaganda. I mean... The, 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 just yeah. Say yeah, the liberal so, propaganda, yeah. Propaganda? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think it is? It's propaganda. That's what so I said. The emphasis it was. is on the ander. It's Let's not see. propaganda. Will you give up on this idiotic sorry. pronunciation? You can't pronounce anything, Sandra. <laughs> Sandra, would you like to propaganda. answer the question? I'm, so, I'm sorry about the incursions of the uh, juice head idiot on my left. Um, so, so is this right? Are the Aboriginal race now taking on board this liberal propaganda? I think only some of them have. I don't think most of them are paying too much attention to it. That's the thing in the end, isn't it, Sandra? I mean, these uh, sort of uh, treaties come out of the... I think come out of the University of Sydney, this one, hasn't it, Mr Parry? It's called New South Wales. Yeah, University of New South Wales. Yeah. And, I mean, they do live in a sort of ivory tower, some of these people, don't they? Yeah, they do. And the thing is that um, apparently these type of diversity toolkits, which is what it's officially known as... Um, diversity uh, toolkits. That's what they're calling it, the Diversity Toolkit, and a lot of undergraduate students have to read it as part of their um, course, but it also comes um, from from various other universities. So apparently it's not just the New South Wales University, it's at others as well. Okay. I mean, whatever happened to universities being places of learning and places of discussion and places of debate where, you know, you don't... don't, you don't get told what you're allowed to think. You're actually allowed to, to have some kind of, uh, you know, intellectual mm. conversation about it. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You would hope that um, all of our universities are just that, a clearinghouse of debate and, and new thought. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what will happen next, uh, Sandra. Uh, what will happen in, in Australia will, uh, will echo what's happened here. The National Union of Teachers and several of the teaching unions have been meeting in the last week. They always meet over Easter. One of the things they voted on was to try and get rid of lessons in schools which teach uh, children about the history of Britain. It's, it's called uh, British Culture and Values. They voted to get rid of all that now because it reminds people of our so-called colonial past. I mean, it's utter nonsense that people can't be proud of their countries anymore. I mean, for instance, is Captain James Cook still regarded by the majority of Australians as the founding father of your country, or is he now to be regarded as a Hitler-like invader? No, not the latter, certainly not the latter. He's, um, it, most people do say he is the first European to have stepped foot on the east coast of Australia. Mm. Whether or not he's the first European to have discovered Australia is open to debate because there's all those, you know, I, I mean, I remember being taught in history in school that the Dutch were here first, the Portuguese were here, and even yeah. French um, cartographers in the 16th, in the 17th century had mapped Australia. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Now, I understand... A chap- how, but how much of this matters in the end? Because, I mean, one of the things that you could well, say about... Well, it matters about, dreadfully. I'm not asking you, I'm asking Sandra. Yeah, well, I'm because she lives advising in Australia. Advising Sandra. She lives in Australia, right? Yeah. So the point is, is that for your Australian sort of, you know, heritage and for your Australian sense of nationality, does it matter who discovered it or who was living there first or any? Does any of that matter? Of course it does. I'm not asking you. Well, I'm telling you, Sandra. 
Well, it does matter. It does matter to a degree. And uh, the interesting thing is how much people take it on sort of, you know, as a um, as a mantra or anything sort of really personal. I think people just accept that the Aborigines were here first and that, um, you know, the great European arrival happened in from the 1700s on. Mm. Having said all that, Sandra, and I'm not a, you know, woolly-minded liberal and all that, but the plight, I don't think really doubt about the plight of the Aborigines <laughs> and the Aboriginal race in recent decades has been very controversial, hasn't it, in the sense that, you know, it's been claimed they haven't been offered opportunities lifestyles, you know, the sort of education prospects that, um, that most Australians enjoy who, who are descended from the European settlers? Well, there is a lot of controversy about that, that's for sure. And there's a lot of um, sort of facts on the record. You know, the Aboriginal people have a lower life expectancy. They have poorer outcomes in health and education. Yeah. But it's not, it's not sort of true for all Aborigines. Um, the thing is that, you know, the ones who are living still out in, out in the outback, mm. their outcomes are a lot different to the urbanised Aborigines. Sure. And apparently part of all this anyway is, uh, is to try and make sure that... Uh, Aboriginal students who now attend university in big numbers and all that kind of stuff don't feel that they're being sort of, um, you know, focused on and that sort of thing. Is that right? No, I think it's just politically correct brigade trying to sort of impose their own sort of far left leaning. Right, OK. Well, it's not good, is it? it not isn't. good. I think we should talk about sharks now. I do as well. I think you bored the uh, backside <laughs> of everybody else with these ridiculous questions well, you've you, Sandra. As, as you couldn't you know, grasp, as you couldn't the, grasp you the, the historical... You can hear the audience numbers falling away every second. As you couldn't grasp the historical <laughs> significance of anything, I think we should move on because yes. you're, you're looking confused. You're, well, you've gone cross-eyed. Well, no, I was horrified to, to read a story about a guy who had a large chunk of his thigh bitten off by a shark and he would have bled to death had it not been for the uh, the quick wittedness of the people on uh, on a beach that's right and it, it's a, um, a staggering attack that happened on the south coast of um, New South Wales only a, probably about an hour and a half south of Sydney right. yeah. and this guy was out surfing at uh, dusk on Tuesday night, yeah, Tuesday, no, Wednesday night, sorry, mm. and uh, which is always the bad time to surf, either at dawn or dusk, because you can't see what's in the water, mm-hmm. and um, it's when the sharks apparently like to hunt. And he got a massive chunk taken out of his thigh, and he was just incredibly lucky that um, one of his best mates was out surfing with him. And he looked around and saw um, this fat ch- uh, chap sort of screaming and going under, and so he paddled over to him and got him up on his surfboard and managed to get him back to the beach and used his leg rope as a tourniquet to um, to stop the blood flow. Amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. But isn't the guy an idiot for going out and on his surfboard at times, which surely any Australian who swims in those waters in that part of the world must know he's playing with fire? Pretty much. Everybody does know you don't want to go into the surf at dawn or dusk because yeah. it's the most dangerous time. And um, But I guess, you know, maybe he was working and he wanted to go for a post-work surf and it was a beautiful night. Yeah, well, you know. Well, I mean, you've said yourself, Sandra, haven't you, it wouldn't stop you going into the water. And, I mean, I was reading the report which said, you know, yes, dusk and dawn are the mm. more dangerous times, but actually there's been some shark attacks during other times as well. So, I mean, you know, like I've, I've often repeated, I, I just don't know why anybody even thinks of going into the water. No, it must be mad. Got to be completely mad. <laughs> Um, tell- well, uh, the shark attacks, they're so, they're, I mean, we talk about them all the time, mm. but really, in in effect, they're, they're pretty rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they are pretty rare, but, I mean, if you're the one who's the victim, the rareness of it doesn't really occur to you, does it, when one of your legs is yeah, missing? That, that was unlucky. Yeah, yeah, he got washed up on the beach, yeah. where's my leg? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Imagine the pain that you'd be sorry? in, so if a shark took a bite out of your leg. Imagine how painful no, you wouldn't. Be. No, you wouldn't be in any pain at yeah, all. You no, you'd be in shock. You'd be in, well, you'd you'd be in, in total, pain first. You'd, no, no, you wouldn't. You'd be in total shock. Really? Yeah, and when you woke up in hospital... Have you ever been bitten by a dog? No. Well, if you were, you would know you're talking absolute cobblers. Well, there's a big difference between the size of a dog's mouth and the size of a white, you know, a great white <laughs> whale's mouth, OK? A great white you, whale. You idiot, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, sorry, the other thing I was going to say is when you woke... You no, know, Sarge is still here. I know she's still here. Stop abusing but me. She, but she, she, will, um, she will confirm what I'm about to say. A lot of these people who get their legs bitten off by sharks, yeah. they don't realise their legs have gone until about three weeks later because they wake up in hospital. Three weeks later? Well, you can't they see... They don't notice when they leave hospital. No, 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 because you can't see your legs because they put a cage over what used to be your legs and a blanket, but there's this psychological thing that you have where you still think your legs are there and you can feel your toes even though you've got no legs. What sort of National Health Service have they got in, in Australia, Sergeant? Did they really put a cage around you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what about cage around Porky? It's about the only thing I should do. No, no, no. No, you know what I mean. But, I mean, there is one advantage. When we, um, you know, when we had sort of problems uh, with urban warfare in this country, uh, Sandra, I'm talking about Northern Ireland and all that kind of stuff, our surgeons became the best in the world at treating sort of uh, bomb injuries and all that kind of stuff. So it does mean, doesn't it, that the Australian surgeons will be the best in the world at treating people who get uh, gobbled up by sharks. <laughs> Hmm? That's one way of looking at yeah. it. Well, of course it is. Happy yeah. days. <laughs> exactly, great. yeah. Marvelous. Let's look at the positives. Come yeah. on, it's not all negative. Mm. Right, yeah. now, yeah. we've not got any more, very very little time. Have you got any more questions you want to ask Sandra quickly? No, no quickly? I, just, I just want to thank you for being on the show right. again. Of course, Sandra, mm. a delight as ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm. We'll talk to you Thanks soon. for the last, fellas. No, no problem at all. Take it easy. We're serious me. broadcasters, by the way. Yeah, it's not all that, you know. No, it's mm. certainly not. Now, listen, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about. Yeah, go on. Now, our good man, John, who is often uh, controlling all the buttons and levers on this show, right? Yeah. Uh, sort of tech op. Uh, he's guy. not here tonight, though. Ollie's here tonight. Uh, I know Ollie's here tonight. I'm very glad to see Ollie. Well, why it's you a great John to have him. Because he is also a film critic, is he not? He is indeed. Right, that's why I mentioned him. Now, has he reviewed this latest film called Batman vs Superman? Batman vs Superman. Yeah, yeah, he did, in fact, on a Thursday morning. And what did he think of it? Well, he basically said, if that's your cup of tea... Uh, you know, these kind of superhero-type movies, yes. then you'll like okay. it. So you'll go... My kids desperately want to go and see it, right? They were bugging me this weekend. Right. Saying, you know, it's on Easter holidays. And did you weeks. go and see it? No, but not this weekend, no. Why not? Well, because we didn't have time. Oh, that's very cruel. Why is it cruel? Well, your kids were desperate to go and see Batman vs Superman. You wouldn't yeah. take them. Why well, not? It's not that I wouldn't take them. It's too much we... bladderation. No, we just didn't have time. We were doing uh, too many other things. You were too busy on getting all the no, not true. Easter grog down your throat not by the sound of it. No, is I might this, say is them... this the theme music? Well, it sounds a bit like it, doesn't it? Sounds like it sounds like it would be. Superman-ish. It's more Superman. Oh, the Superman, yeah, It's more true, Superman yeah. than Batman. Yeah, OK, that's fine. But you know what he did say? He said it's what? very... And one of the reasons, actually, mm. I'm slightly reluctant. Mm. I might try and get the, is their mother to take them. Yes. Apparently it's very long. Well... It's about um, two and a half hours long. Now, you know our good friend Brian Viner, who, yes. of course, is a film critic yeah, for Daily Mail? Yeah, came to see us up at the Lowry. Came uh, to see us up at the Lowry. Is he going to come to the show at the dance house? Uh, I don't think he'll be at the dance house. I think he'll be going to be at Dingwalls in London. Oh, will he? OK. Which is in uh, June. That's in it? June, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we'll start telling people about that as well. By the way. Uh, some very good way, what? feedback from Manchester. Yes. The dance house is a week next Saturday night. Is it that close? Week next Saturday. Oh. Uh, going up there. It's a big weekend in Manchester. The marathon's on. It's the Grand National yeah. Liverpool, of course, yeah. the same afternoon. But, big weekend uh, in Manchester. The Grand but, National's but, on. But they've put a couple of rows more seats in at the back of the uh, auditorium. Why? Because of demand for tickets. So oh, right. if you want to go and see us at the dance house, folks, get busy on the old ticket line. Yeah, right. Where you do they find, find that? that? Well, they can find it on the two mics.co.uk. Right. Or on our Facebook page, of course. It, oh, of course well, you and can. And also, I pinned it to the top of my tweets. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. So you can find it there as so well. It's, it's, uh, but it'll be a great night of bladderation. We'd love to see you. So well, if you want to come along, please do. I don't know why you say that, if you're encouraging people to drink beforehand. Well, I people to be happy. Anyway, the point of my story on this What's one the is... the story with the bar, by the way? Will there be a late bar? Oh, yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm certain, yes. They're not going to, like, turn around and no, say the no, bar's no, no, closed? No, no, no. No, no, I spoke to... I spoke to the... Uh, promoters, it's, it's, it's fine, yeah. Right. Now, uh, Brian gives this, and this is a very, very rare occasion, he gives it one star out of five. Really? He says, so he, doesn't oh, like it. he says, overblown and, the point you've just made, overlong, OK? Mm. He says, uh, the highlight of what he says, not the highlight, the low point of what he says, yeah. it's costly, witless and very noisy. Batman vs. Superman doesn't deserve rescuing. Uh, Here for Once is a movie that lives up to its billing. Batman vs Superman has been energetically promoted as an epic superhero journey like no other. And I can tell you, it's quite true. For unlike most other recent superhero films, certainly those from the Marvel stable, it is incoherent, tedious and largely devoid of wit. It is also thunderously loud, which goes with the territory, but there are times when I don't mind sacrificing my eardrums and times when I do. After two and a half hours... How about that, Mike? Sitting there for two and a half Half hours. Well, that's what I said. It's yeah. Two and a half, you know, I'm not really sure. I want to. The superpower anyway. I most craved myself was an ability to doze through explosions. Mm. From start to finish, Zack Snyder's film judders with its own self-importance, putting up allusions to God, the 9/11 attacks, and the spectre of nuclear holocaust, as though we're uh, as though we're meant nuclear holocaust, ho- ho- holocaust, yeah. as if we're meant to take uh, any of this stuff seriously. And then he goes on to say, you know, I, you know, he just doesn't rate it at all. Now that's all very well. Well, hmm. except that I'm certain I heard in an American broadcast last night yeah. it's heading towards a record 
opening oh, yeah, box office be. weekend. Well, it will be. I mean, because it's one of these movies that everybody yeah. will go and see yeah, because yeah. it's the sort of the big movie of the sure, week. Sure, sure. And that's the thing. I mean, quite often critics are a little bit sort of, shall we say, dismissive of mega hits yeah. because you know, for them, it's all about a commercial exercise. And yes. it's not necessarily anything you know to uh, uh, to praise artistically. Yes, ab- absolutely. Who are the two big actors in it then? Well, isn't Ben Affleck one of them? Ben Affleck? Oh, it is, yeah. He, he, when he got the role of Batman, did he not get all sorts of abuse from Batman f- uh, fans who said, you know, you'll be absolutely rubbish? You're too handsome you know, and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, it's not that. He's wearing yeah. a mask, isn't he? It doesn't matter. I mean, George Clooney was Batman. No, <laughs> oh, so oh Batman, yeah, Batman. I thought you meant Superman. No, Batman, No, I yeah. said Batman. Right, uh, let's have a look here. Uh, 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 it says, mm. Henry Cavill's Man of Steel and Ben Affleck's Caped Crusader. Yeah. So it's somebody called Henry Cavill. Yeah, I don't Ever know. heard of him? No, Ever heard of him? He's, uh, he's Superman. Uh-huh. And Ben Affleck is uh, ben Batman. Affleck. Ben Affleck. Uh, yeah, what's Affleck doing in the cape anyway? He's w- now well over 40, it right. says, uh, and showing it around the eyes. Who wants to see crow feet on Batman's eyes? Well, sure you can't see his crow's feet if he's got a mask on. Well, yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. Right. Uh, anyway, um, the reason I kind of raise this, apart from the fact it's very interesting, yeah. you know, because it's got... It, by the way, Brian's is not the only bad review. I looked no. at some over the mm. weekend and there's terrible reviews. Really? Uh, and yet it's going to be a film. But what I came across in one of my journals yeah. was the history of the um, Superman comics. Oh, yeah. So, for instance... Did you ever look at those when you were a kid? Yeah, I did, comics? yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. See, I, I never them. really did. Oh, I loved them. I was never a comic Oh, I loved them. Yeah, I loved comics. I, I used to get comics when I was ill. My mother would always bring me, like, a, a couple of comics when I was sick. I would read The Hornet. The Hornet, no. Religiously? No. Uh, when I was a little kid, yeah. Dandy and Beano, Dandy always. Dandy and Beano, yeah. Dandy and Beano. Yeah. Uh, and then I used to write... Uh, I uh, used to read one called Eagle. Eagle, yes, I remember that. Right. But I never read... See, Hornet, I never read any of those. Hotspur. Yeah. And uh, Hotspur. yeah, and the Superman comics yeah. I did, Superman and Batman all really? the time. Oh, I love those American I, comics. I yeah, never did no. But anyway, it says here, mm. says here, um, the official story. Actually, yeah. this is uh, what's it called? I don't know what it's called, but it's, I think it's called the official story. The official story of the uh, superhero comics. Oh yeah, and it says. Bob Kane was a guy who first drew Batman in 1939. Yes. He was an editor at National Allied Publications, Mm. which later became, believe it or not... DC Comics. DC Comics, thank you, in this country. Yeah. And um, he'd informed a young artist that the company was looking for a superhero to match Superman. So Superman was already out, right, right. And, and the Superman comic was selling, like, millions, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Right. So... Um, so what's your point here? Well, the editor at National Allied told Bob Kane, can you come up with somebody else? Oh, so you after, mean he invented Superman? Uh, no, Superman had already been invented. Oh, I see. So after a weekend at his drawing board at home, this guy, Bob Kane... Yeah. Uh, produced a sketch that uh, he took back into the editor and captured it, the Bat, and captioned it, the Batman. Okay. Kane dashed sketch in hand to the apartment of a writer named Bill Finger. That's <laughs> a strange Bill name. Bill Finger. Bill Finger, yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. Who he had befriended the year before. Right. Finger had some ideas. So he. T- <laughs> he hey? Finger, Finger had, had some, some ideas. ideas. Well, I right, yeah. Finger. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what happened was. I only had five people like you. Yeah, exactly. So he said, give me these drawings, leave them with me. So he suggested the character should live up to his sinister name. Yeah. Shades of black and grey would be much right. more fitting than the red uniform. Well, that that's came why when they, when they did the, the original kind of Batman movies, they that's said right. it was much more true to the original comic. That's right. It wasn't such a comic caper. No, no, they did. It was did. a bit dark. An angular cowl with white lidless slits for the eyes. This was in the original. Cow. Cowl, cowl. Oh, cowl? Yeah, like cowl. Simon Cowl. Yeah, that's right. Uh, would be particularly horrifying to his criminal prey. Mm. And what about topping it and him with a pair of back-like ears? This is how the Dark Knight was born. Yeah. He was originally Knight. called the Dark Knight. That's right. Which didn't really come into that the... that was the Heath Ledger one, wasn't it? That didn't Knight. come into the lexicon of Batman until, no. like, a few years ago, did yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Right. You've seen the time. Uh, hang on, hang on. Don't worry about the time. No, I'm worried about it. After that, only the most Prince-stained Batman fans knew anything about Finger's role in their hero's <laughs> creation. First appearance of Batman in May Finger. 1939, issue of Detective Comics, was written by Finger, <laughs> right, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, and drawn by Kane. Right. But only the latter received any public recognition, and that's how it's been ever since. So Finger's sort of oh, been forgotten about. Finger was fingered. Um, no, he wasn't. Finger no, was not fingered. He wasn't fingered. Finger was unfingered, <laughs> if you see what I mean. He never got any uh, credit for creating well, all the words well, around Batman. Yeah, That's a terrible story. It, and, and, and for, I don't know why you've told me. For decades afterwards, um, Bob Kane always says, Batman was created by Bob Kane. 
Oh, right. So he's stitched the guy up royally. Yeah, stitched him well up done, royally. Yeah. Yeah, sounds yeah. like your kind of guy. That's yeah. the sort of thing you would do. Yeah. You'd probably forget about your collaborator. I see oh. that you put out the weekend, and it was all down to you, by the way, what? that the, uh, the download of our DVD oh, yes, was yes, made yes, available. Yeah, yeah I made why that did clear. You, why did you think you had to make that clear? Well, I'd like the, you know, I'd like the millions who listen to us to know exactly where the direction of the, you know, the dynamism is coming from. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The dynamic. Right. The dynamic, that's okay. what I meant. Most yeah. people thought it was absolutely self-serving and hilariously wrong. No, 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 no. Anyway, no, it's no. way too late for us to be discussing these things. Uh, the moving finger rights and having ri- moved Somebody's on. Writing a book about Finger's say. life. Really? Yeah. What's he going to call it? I don't... <laughs> Finger fingerless. As a property investor, I get sent a lot of property journals. Obviously, is that you know. what you call yourself? What? A property investor. Well, I am a property oh, really? investor. You know, you've never, you've never owned up to that. Well, it's you've a never fact said, of life. Well, you've it's never called yourself. Is that what you put down when they say occupation? No, I don't. Property no. investor. No, it's what a hobby. Put? It's a hobby. A hobby? Yes. Oh, how nice yeah. for you. You know, it's... Uh... Well, it's lovely, isn't it? No, no. I'd like to have a hobby of property investment. Well, uh, look, what are you going on about? You keep tell- <laughs> trying to tell people that, you know, I'm a, a slum landlord. Well, you I'd are. prefer to be called a property investor, thank yeah, but, you. Well, do you deny that you're a slum landlord? <laughs> of course I'm not a slum landlord. You deny that you rent cheap property to students. That's not true at all. I, I... Run down old ramshackle... No, no. Homes. No, I have very high standards. Now, what I was going to tell you about was this. Uh, one property I got sent was a house near Chipping Norton, uh-huh. which is where the Chipping Norton set live, obviously. Yes, of course, Oxfordshire. <coughs> Oxfordshire. Very nice up there. And, and, and it's, Not cheap either. It's like, well, I was about to tell you, David Cameron yeah. and people like our old friend Rebecca Way. What's her it's name? Not now? my old friend, I have to say. What, what, what's her surname? Rebecca Wade. Rebecca Wade. Brooks now. Brooks, Rebecca Charlie Brooks. Brooks, yeah, Brooks. Charlie Brooks. A lady who is currently head of news. Uh, is it UK now? I think it's called News. Just News. News, that's right, in this country. Yeah. But anyway, that, you know, she's the flame hair. Sort of um, yes, uh, um, boss mogul, I suppose. Executive, you call her. Yeah, executive. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the point of the story is, I get sent this uh, information. I have a look at it. Oh, it's a nice house and mm. it's a nice property. It's got a bit of land. Yeah. Uh, however, it's twenty-seven million pounds. Twenty-seven million. Twenty-seven million. Well, what for a house? Yes. One house. Yes. Well, it must have a lot of ground. Um, let me have Man a of the people. Look. You're not a buyer. Are you? Eh? You're not going to buy it. No, I'm not going to buy it, but it is rumoured that the Beckhams have been looking at it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the house is called Abbotswood. Uh-huh. Oh, is, uh, that, is, that, is that not a famous house, Abbotswood? It's not that famous, but anyway... Well, I, I feel as though I know the name. It's for sale through um, Knight Frank for £27 million. Uh, the estate has that rare combination, beloved of celebrities everywhere. It's in the heart of things... Uh-huh. Uh, yet absolutely private. It's a Grade Two listed Victorian house. Yeah. You approach it along a sweeping drive between two entrance lodges. Right. They come with the house. Okay. Right. Uh, there's plenty of room to kick a ball around. It's 774 acres. Uh-huh. Right. That's big. Mm. 774 acres. That's big. It's, it's giant. It's massive. Yeah. Uh, you can fish. For... Why don't they build some houses on that all that acreage and then you know make it so that it's more accessible to people without 27 million quid in the bank? It's private land. Yeah, I know, but that's the problem in this country. Half the country yeah. is private land, and you can't build on it. Well, so land is not theft yet, you know. No, I'm not We're saying not it is. Some sort of I'm commie not, I'm uh, not saying it is. enterprise. Well, what do you need 700-odd acres for? Somebody who likes 700 acres, Why? and they've got 27 million, Why, they can have it. Why can't you shave a couple of hundred off and, and put some you know, low-income housing up there? I don't know. Ask the people who own it. They might want to flog it off for a housing estate well, or something. Well, they could sell it for 25 it's, million, it's, maybe. It's their, it's their decision. Mm. Anyway, uh, you can also take your own fishing parties and go and fish for brown trout oh, nice. on the River Dickler. Right, which, yeah, which runs through the grounds, yeah. or you could go horse riding and gallop for twenty minutes before you reach the edge of your estate. No, that's super. You can go walking or cycling. Okay, yeah, it is only a mile from Stowe on the Wold. Yes, which has that's po- the Cotswolds, isn't it? That's the Cotswolds, mm. which has popular boutiques, restaurants, and a fish and chip shop. Mm. It's only five miles from the fashionable Dalesford Organic Farm. I've never heard of it. Neither have I. And it says it's 18 miles Must from... Must be fashionable, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We haven't heard 18 it. miles from Soho Farmhouse. Soho Farmhouse? Yeah, now that is the... Is that the Soho House sort exactly. of country version? Exactly, that is the country version oh, yeah. of Soho House, which you know, is in I went Soho to a, in London. I went to a, wed- a wedding once in Nottinghamshire, right? Yes. Just outside of Nottingham. Yes. And stayed in this very chic kind of, you know, boutique hotel. Yeah, in Nottingham? Was, no, it was outside in the country, right? Oh, right. But the problem was, it was because it was in the country, yeah. it was surrounded by fields. Right. And apparently the farmer... Usually, usually they do find a few fields in the country. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much yeah. for your sort of insidious, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. hints there. But what happened was, Ooh. apparently the guy who was the farmer yes. hated the idea that people were always coming out from London and yeah. stuff and staying in this yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he used to muck spread. 
basically every weekend. It's disgusting. So that there was a stench, yeah. uh, the like of yeah. which you know you yeah. couldn't get rid of. Yeah. And it was in the, it was in all the rooms. Yeah. You couldn't you know no matter it's if terrible. you shut all the windows. He did it deliberately. God, should have been people arrested. Who, for people who rang the hotel, spreading filth. The people who ran the hotel said Ooh. that he did it religiously every right. single Friday, right? Because he knew that there'd be loads of people coming to stay at yeah. the hotel the weekend, so they'd yeah. never come back. Yeah, and, and I've never been back. Really, yeah. for that reason. Yeah, it was a bit of a bad uh, wedding actually. Oh, dear me, it was one of the, I can tell you a good story about it. Anyway, the estate. You're not interested. I am very interested. Thank you. Yes, mm. the estate was in the Cotswolds Golden Triangle, which is a sort Golden after. Golden Triangle. Yeah, yeah. Cotswolds mm. Golden Triangle, which is a sort of after a area between Chipping Norton, Burford, and Stowe on uh-huh. the Wold, right. which is home to the Chipping Norton set of celebrities and politicians. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Uh, I but mean, why, I mean, why are you being targeted by this kind of mailing? They must I think that you've got quite a portfolio if they think you're interested in paying twenty-seven million for a place. Oh no, I think it's just general property I get sent. Right, it's got ten bedrooms. Mm. Uh, so the main house is the ten-bedroom stone manor house. It's yeah. got a panelled library, two former reception rooms, uh, and the main house was built in 1862. Yeah. Although an older house, thought to have dated from 1669, mm. previously stood in the grounds, records suggest that Richard, the Earl of Cornwall, who was the second son of King John... And the younger brother of King Henry the Third. King Henry the Third. Yeah, mm. I'm not too Cre- familiar with King Henry the Third. No, I'm not actually. To be honest, created the park when he bought the manor of Lower Swell, which is now the village half a mile down the road in the mid 13th century. Right. So you see, it's very interesting. So why are you telling me all this? Well, I think it's just such a fantastic house. Mm. Uh, you've got to remember that. Uh, was it built by Sir Edwin Lutyens? No, I don't think it was Lutyens. actually. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. Sir Edward Lutyens <laughs> built the so ambassador's Lutyens. residence in Washington, D.C., where I have stayed, by the way. Lutyens, well, it's eh? called, isn't it? Lutyens, is Lutyens. Is it Lutyens? Lutyens. Are you sure? Yeah. Listen, in addition to the house, get this. Uh, you get 13 farmhouses. Yeah. So there's 13 farms on the estate, right? And cottages. Presum- I mean, so presumably would you think that a place like that is a going concern, like as a business? It must be. Farm-wise. Well, you must rent, so, so you must rent to, them out. So you'd have to know, but you'd have to have a farm manager and all of that. No, no I, I imagine each farm's got a tenant in it, isn't it, managing the land? Well, that's I what suppose. I'm saying, because you couldn't just leave it Any, to Anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, that's a stuff of dreams, isn't it? 27 million quid. No, and yet, no and, it's and, not the stuff of dreams at all. And yet... Like, people like, you know, the late, great David Bowie died with a fortune of 150 million quid. People like that, people like, for instance, Lord Alan Sugar, Mm. people like, you know... I don't know, half a dozen rock stars in this country yeah. could go along and buy that the by Beckhams. clicking their fingers. Well, they could. Or the Beckhams, yeah. Well, they could, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, for most ordinary mortals... And it's amazing, isn't it, the way the wealth and the deprav- uh, the wealth and... Depravity. And, no, no, those who haven't got it in our society, mm. the gap seems to be growing bigger all the time. Oh, this is the problem. This is what yes. people keep saying. And, yes. and, you know, there's a lot of people that can't even afford to buy a one-bedroom or a studio flat in London yeah. because, you know, there's just no way they'll ever have that kind of money. Well, it's absolutely true. And there's something wrong with that, meanwhile, I would have to say. Meanwhile, at the same time... the time, by the way. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about the time. This is interesting information. Yeah, right. Meanwhile, at the same time, over in North Korea, North Koreans have been told by their, you know, their great leader, great leader right. Kim Jong Un, right. they've got to work harder. So they've been told now they can't go home after a day's work and get their head down for a couple of hours and right. start work again uh, very early the next morning right. to show their loyalty to the country. Mm. Uh, and to Kim Jong-un, yeah. workers are putting in extra hours to boost production mm. in everything from coal mining to the fisheries. So you'd love that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd just be working all the time. You'd love that. Well, they, well the only problem is they don't get paid for it. They're told ah. it's, they're doing it for the country. Yeah, quite right. I don't know. Quite right. I've been to Louisville, Nashville, Knoxville, on Babaka, Shepherdville, Jacksonville, Waterville, Coastal, Rima, Pittsfield, Springfield, Bakersfield, Shreveport, Hackensack, Cadillac, Fond du Lac, Davenport, Idaho, Jellicoe, Argentina, Diamantina, Pasadena, Catalina, see what I mean. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, it's bare, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. I travel, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. That's a great song to me. You don't yeah, think that's a great, great song? song. Well, that's that, a country is, song. Is that Johnny Cash? It's Johnny Cash. It's yeah, a country okay, song. Okay, but the sort of country songs I can't stand are, you know, Stand by Your Man. Tell me why not. That's right, yeah. What's wrong with that? What about the Dixie Chicks? Uh, the Dixie Chicks, forget it, man. Uh, apparently, man. Uh, what I've uh, what I've omitted to uh, tell our audience yeah. of millions. Well, I was imagine there's many things you've is, omitted to tell them. Is that Dolly Parton, of course, was a hit at Glastonbury. When was that? Was that last year? Dolly Parton was at Glastonbury, yeah. Yeah? I think it was last year. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Dolly but, uh, Parton is sort of universally loved by almost everyone. 
What? Because she's 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 kind of oh over yeah no above, I like Dolly Parton she's over and above uh, country music oh she made another great record called Islands in the Stream yeah she did it with yeah, Kenny that's, Rogers that's right that's also a country music song well it's not yes, it's it a is. nice song it's not a country song I mean Neil Diamond started out as a country musician sung sung blue yeah. everybody I don't want you to knows start singing all this stuff. Anyway, do you want to hear my Nashville story uh, yeah, I was on, in yeah, Nashville yeah. Tennessee where they have this place called the Grand Old Opry and I mean yeah. everywhere you go yeah. it is country music city yeah. I mean oh yeah no, I know it's incredible I mean, I've been at the high into... street there everything's a music studio yeah. yeah I mean it's just amazing and I was in a bar with this photographer that I was working with yeah um, and I can't remember what we were doing there I, think, mm. I can't remember what the story was anyway we're in this bar and this song came on do you remember the Charlie Daniels band no. The Devil Goes Down to Georgia, I think the song was. Oh, The Devil Goes Down to Georgia. Yeah, I think, and they've got yeah. the mad sort of fiddling going yeah, on. Yeah, that, right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is actually not a terrible song, yeah, no, as, exactly, as those yeah. kind of songs go. But I was standing at the bar with this guy, and uh, and I started I was just ranting about how I hated the Charlie Daniels band. I really yeah, just thought yeah, they were the yeah. worst thing that anybody had ever yeah, heard. It was yeah. awful. I hate this song. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. This guy tapped me on the shoulder, mm. and, and he said to me, hey, Mm. We are the Charlie Daniels band. <laughs> no. They were in the bar. No. I'm not joking. No, you're joking. I'm not joking because <laughs> it turns out it was around the corner from me. I had to make a rather hasty retreat. I'm not, I'm not uh, surprised. Because the they weren't very impressed by the fact that this not, limey had turned up. I'm not surprised. Uh, didn't apparently Start like slagging them off. country music very That's much. That's terrible. I wish you could be more diplomatic when you're abroad, yes. honestly. Well, really these is, things uh, can happen. Disgraceful. Now, uh, here's a couple mm. more uh, tweets for you. Right. Um, here's one from uh, David in Essex. He says, Mike, so Porky's never been fat. So why did he tell the Daily Mail in 2008 that he was 17 stone before he took up walking in 2005. What? He's 49. What? Well, he's obviously reading from that Daily Mail interview you gave. Well, no, well that was... Uh, that was... Well, I got I got fat, and that's how I... Oh, you did I, get fat? No, that's how I recognised my heart had gone. What had happened I is... I thought you recognised your heart had gone when you collapsed. My heart was down to uh, just 15% of working, right? Yeah. That's even lower than one-third. And is it? Uh, oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. And uh, the third is what thirty three and a third percent. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and my body was filling up with uh, fluids which weren't moving well, you anywhere. Do that every, that does that every day? No, it? no, no, no. Which weren't going anywhere. No. And I, I did get fat, and that's how I realised that I was very desperately, seriously ill, yeah. critically almost. And that's why they had to pump seven liters of water out of my <laughs> uh, system. What's your problem? I just can't imagine them what? pumping seven liters of water. Yeah, they did. Liters. Did you immediately go down to about seven seven yeah, stone? Yeah, I then? did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the water. How long did it take to get all that water out? Of about you? a day. Really. And and they they put a like a thing in my in my back between my ribs, yeah. and the water just kept pouring out. Right. I mean, it was you know it that's was horrendous, a, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, filling up buckets of water <laughs> coming out of my uh, my body. It was amazing. Yeah, it's true. Um, I was drowning. I was internally drowning. Yeah, and that kind of stuff. Right. And um, and so I did uh, weigh a lot then, but uh, but it all went away. Oh, okay. So don't worry about it. No, okay. I'm not worried. Can yeah. I tell you the seventh arrondissement? By the way, does not include the uh, Champs Elysees or the Art de of the Triomphe. Oh really? The seventh arrondissement is over by the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, well, that's the other what side I meant. The Eiffel Tower. I like the Eiffel well, Tower. Well, it's going to be the other side of the river. Yes, I know, but I like the Eiffel. I used to walk from one to the other. You see, I stayed in a hotel very near the Champs Elysees, and I used it's to walk It's situated over... on the Rive Gauche. That's right, the Rive Gauche, and I used to. Uh... Yeah, that stands for. Uh, left bank. Yeah. And, Do you know uh, what else it is? The Reeve Ghost. The Reeve Ghost? Yeah, a very famous perfume by Yves Saint Laurent. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I used to go in the bar in Paris that was used by that little dwarf fella. Which you know? one? You know, you know, he's very famous well, French the guy dwarf. From Fantasy Island. No, 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 you idiot. The no. plane, the plane, that guy. No, no, no. This guy was a French dwarf. He was he was very famous. Really? Very famous French dwarf. I don't remember him. Yeah, he was an artist. Mm. He's an artist. An artist? Yeah. What well, you mean Toulouse Lautrec? To lose a trek, yeah. that's a guy. Yeah, okay. he was part of what I we thought call... he used to hang on, hang out in Montmartre. He did actually quite a lot, but uh -huh. but he, he used to go to brothels in Montmartre. But his studio was on the left bank was because it? he was part of the left bank set. Was he? And he was he was a midget. He was only about literally about sort of uh, four foot tall. Yeah. But he was apparently very attractive to women. He was a very talented man. That's and why. he used to uh, he used to be a right mass Rogeriser over on the Montmartre brothel scene. Uh, no, that's absolutely true. <laughs> the Montmartre brothel scene. It's absolutely scene. true. I don't remember that um, our old friend Mickey Brennan, who is now exiled in where Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yeah. yeah, that's right. Because he uh, had a bit of a problem with the American tax man, didn't he? Uh, well, no, his wife is Costa Rican. They decided to retire there. Yeah, but I think he didn't. There was an incident. An incident. Yeah, yeah it's, it's difficult for him to get back into. America. I believe that may be the case. That's right. Well, don't yeah. you remember when Mickey used to get completely bladderated. Yeah, and you know, 
was ingesting various substances and all that. Do you remember his favourite impression? Was I don't to... think you should be making any libelous don't, comments don't, about don't, him because he might decide to solve his problem with the American taxpayer yeah. by suing you. No, no, I haven't suggested anything, have I? I well, you've just anything. said that he used to ingest various substances. Well, yeah, they could have been aspirins, couldn't they? They or, could have been, or, yeah. or, you know, they could have been uh, toffees yeah. or, or whatever it's, you want. Indeed, yeah. I'm not suggesting or heart pills. there's anything nefarious, heart no. pills, anything. But I uh, don't remember, he used to take his shoes off mm. and then he used to drop to his knees so his knees went into That's his right, shoes. That's right, he did, yeah. And pretend he was to lose the track. My father used to do that. Did he? Really? Enough, what yeah. a strange thing to do. I oh, know, it was very odd. He's Mike Parry, I'm Mike Graham. <laughs> Another uh, tweet here from Steve. He's oh, yes. rapidly becoming the pun meister of the show. You oh, is he? Say, OK, uh, yeah. jokes about right. rabbits. What airline do rabbits use? Uh, Bunny Airways. Not bad. British Airways. British Airways. Oh, I see. But yeah. the hair is not a rabbit, is it? It's so not. It's stretching that one. OK. Uh, what does that uh, music remind you of? Well, it's the music from Hello, Hello, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and who was the most glamorous actress in that? Well, do you know, that was one of those shows that completely passed me by. I don't think I've ever watched it, because oh. I was in America when it was on. Oh, I thought and it was great. So, and so it's not something I'm really that familiar with. I, I mean, obviously, I know what it was about. Sure, sure. I think Gordon Kay was the lead act, uh, guy. Was he? He, yeah. he? was the guy who ran the wine bar, yeah. around which everything was centred. Uh-huh. But the, uh, the the sexy and glamorous woman in that was Vicky Michelle. OK. And I've got a signed picture at home from Vicky Michelle. A signed picture? Yes, I have, Where'd yeah. Where did you get that from? Uh, I went to some do once as she was at, you really? know, and I told her, how much well, I where'd you get the picture her, from? Um, well, you somebody... just walk around with a picture. Or no, no, no. Somebody sent it to me. Be... Somebody sent it me. Honestly, after what, you mean, she didn't sign it for you. Yeah, it was signed to Mike. You know, best wishes, Vicky Michelle. I've got. Oh, it yeah, but, I mean, what I'm saying is, did you have the picture and then you put it in front of her and say, "Can you sign it?" No. Not well, at all. So she didn't sign it that night? No, I went to her agent and said, right. look, I'd love to have a... Have you got a picture? You went to her agent? Yes, I did. And asked for a signed picture? Well, her agent was at the same do that I was at. It was a, a, it was a variety club of Great Britain do. Right. And I happened to well, sort of... So he happened to have a couple with him? It was a she, the agent. Oh, a she. Right. right. And I said, oh, hello. I said, yeah. And they said, yeah. Hello, hello, did yeah. you say? I just said, uh, well, I didn't actually, no, that would have been too corny, wouldn't it? But I said, uh, you yeah, oh, you know, I'd love to. And in those days, because it, it was... How pathetic is that? No, it was a few years pathetic. ago. A few years ago, we didn't have the old phones. I told you to get lost. Didn't have the old phones to do the selfie and all that. You know, yeah, the yeah. selfie had not been invented in. Uh. The selfie's only about 18 months old, you know. No, I think it's a bit older than that. It's not. Yeah, it is. Uh, what, two, well, three years? Well, people have had cameras on their phones for a long time Yeah, but now. the selfie, the idea of, you know, doing a picture of yourself mm. and, and another person yeah. has only just come about in the last three no, years. Was it not invented? by Piers Morgan when he was at Bazaar, when he was always having his picture taken with various celebs. No, I mean, he had a photographer taking the pictures for I mean. him. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he kind of invented that, you know, celebrity and me type picture. Well, he? not really. I, th- I think people have been doing that since Mickey, what's his name, the little midget guy. He, what? The American actor, you know? Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney, yeah. My dad told me, actually, just after the Second World War, yeah. Mickey Rooney arrived in um, Southampton, you know, yeah. on the, the Queen Mary or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I remember right. uh, reading that, you know, as Mickey Rooney, this mm. five foot one inch guy, you yeah. know, in this long fur coat and all uh, that, got off the uh, boat, you know, all the all the journalists, uh, people like you and I in the nineteen sort of forties, yeah. you know, early nineteen fifties, mm. you know, hey Mickey, how sings in Hollywood? <laughs> Mickey Rooney replied. I am Hollywood. <laughs> and, and just walked off. That's the sort of thing you would yeah. say, actually. Well, well, That's the sort of thing you would say. I wouldn't say it. But anyway, point of the story is... Yeah, what is it? Yeah, so I was at this do, and I said, oh, you know... And he said, oh, yes, we get your picture. Oh, uh, Vicky, can you sign this for Mike? And, oh, thank you. Anyway, the well, point you're not is... you embarrassed. No, not embarrassed at all. Why should you be? Well, because it's a kind of a, it's just an embarrassing thing to do at one of those occasions. No, no, she's a very glamorous woman, and she was very happy to hear... You fancied her, presumably. Well, I did, actually, because so she used to wear quite old... alluring sort of outfits in Hello, what Hello. She, what was she wearing there oh, this night? Oh, she's, like, pr- very properly dressed, you know, no problem. But what she's very... Well, a ball gown? No, t- no, 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 I'd say, like, a, a smart uh, dress, you know, the sort of thing uh-huh. you'd wear for a, right. a lunch, a smart lunch, you so, know what I mean? So this picture that you've got of her, have you got that up somewhere? Yeah, Signed I think, picture? yeah, I have, yeah. Where? It's on my wall of fame. Your wall of fame? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Who else is on your wall of fame? Well, you know, famous people. What, people that have signed pictures? Yes. Or just anyone? Yeah, some of them have signed, yeah. Well, what other yeah. signed pictures have you got? I had no well, idea this was like a hobby of yours. This, uh, yeah, I yeah. want to know who else no, you've got. No, 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 no. Go on, why don't you take a picture of your wall of fame and then tweet it out? No, I'm not going to do that. Why not? That's boastful. I'm not a boastful, not boastful person. Boastful. I'm not a boastful person. I want to know who else you've, uh, you've bothered to get signed pictures of. I think I've got one from Anton Deck, actually. Have you? Yeah. Because yeah. you're a big fan of theirs, obviously. 
Well, of course I am, yeah. They're in the I same used to see them all the time. They've got yeah. favourite peers' party. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. golf at uh, Any, Anyway, the listen, the reason we're talking about Vicky Michelle yeah, is she has her? made the point. She has made the point. She says, look, she says, I'm not having a go at um, you know other actresses and all that. She mm. said, but it does seem to me that whenever a new series comes out, yeah. the actress in it is always the same. You know, for instance, she says... Well, she hasn't been early for years, has she? Well, I, I, I can't remember seeing her anything since Hello, Hello, to be honest. No. And, and I think that's terrible mm. because she is... Uh, a uh, terrifically good actress. Yeah. Um, but she, well, I mean, for instance, Sarah Lancashire. Yeah. You know, she's in Happy Valley. Right. She was in Where the Heart Is. Yeah, mind you, she's married to a television executive. She certainly is. Well, that doesn't yeah. do you any harm. Doesn't do you any harm at area. all. She's most of the guys in not charge that I'm of saying, uh, BBC in the North. I think it's all BBC drama or something. BBC no, I mean, drama. I mean, I'm Peter, not suggesting. Is it Peter Fincham? I think no, it is. Peter Salmon. Peter, Peter Salmon. Salmon. Yeah. I mean, Peter I'm not Salmon, suggesting yeah. that she shouldn't get the roles. No, but, exactly. But it must be a bit easier. Yeah, but you've got to remember the the the, the plaudits she got for acting in Happy. I Valley. mean, maybe if Vicky well, Michelle had married you, she would have had more of a leg up on you know your contacts in the media. You could have got her more work. <laughs> Be very careful talking about leg up, please. You <laughs> it's know, a family mind. show. It's a family show. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, Sarah Langshire was given such fantastic um, plaudit mm. innovations for yeah. her role in Happy Valley. Yes. Nobody can doubt that she was the right woman mm. for the for the job, and yeah. she she's a terrifically talented actress. But yeah. you know, she was in uh, Happy Valley, where the heart is. Last Tango in Halifax, they're making another series of. Oh, yeah. Fine, that's no problem. Catherine Kelly. Um, who? Who, well, Catherine Kelly first started off as. Um, a character in Coronation Street. Right. What was her name? I can't remember now. I don't was, know. Uh, You're the expert. Yeah, yeah. And, and she was in it for years. And, and, and then she did the old kind of, I don't want to be pigeonholed, you mm. know. It's always a risk for an actress, isn't it? So I don't want to be pigeonholed. Well, it is it. if you walk away from something, yeah, you don't get any more work. Yeah, ex- exactly. Right. And uh, I'll find out what she... What, It'd be funny if that happens to Daniel Craig, won't it, now that he said he doesn't want to be James Bond anymore? Yeah, well, he's, done, mean, he's done four James yeah, Bond. Yeah, but I mean, he? he's already typecast as James Bond, right? Yeah. So whatever he appears in next. I mean, yeah. I, I find it very difficult to watch Daniel Craig in any other... Oh, I totally agree with you. Without thinking of James Bond. I totally agree with you. So um, you might as well keep doing it, mate. Roger Moore made a couple of films while he was James yeah, Bond. But I wouldn't and watch one it. of them was called Gold, I think. It really? was about a South African mining disaster or something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And 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 it was impossible yeah. to you, you thought, hang on, I'm watching a James Bond although, film here although or not. he did Wild Geese, didn't he, which I thought was very good. Did Wild Geese, that's true, yeah. But anyway, look, what I'm saying is Catherine Kelly, mm. who was, what was her name? In, Becky. She was Becky, Becky in Coronation Street, right? right. A bit of a sort of down-and-out trollop. Right. She's been... Down-and-out trollop? Yes, she was, yes. Nice. Yes, she was, honestly. That's the role she played. Well, like a homeless character. woman. Well, a bit of a sort of lost soul, oh. you know, sort of bouncing around from, you know, undesirable men to jobs that she kept mm. losing and all that no. kind of stuff, you know, a mm. bit of a drug addict and all no that dear. kind of stuff. But anyway, right. she, she next turned up in Mr. Selfridge, a very sophisticated lady, right. and she was good in that. Then she turned up in Happy Valley yeah. as a senior cop. She was very good in that. Yeah. And then she turned up in The Night Manager, where she was oh, yeah? part of MI6. Which yeah. one was she in that then? Hey, which one was she in that? Well, she was with the MI six mob in the River House, wasn't she? Oh, you was know? she? Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know who all these people are. Yeah, and and um, what's and... the point of all this anyway? Well, what's po- the point? The point is, I've told you that uh, Vicky Michelle is saying, "How come the same actresses yeah. always appear?" In, you know, production well, after production, well series after question. series. You might as well ask the question about all those quiz shows on Olivia TV. Olivia Coleman, Broadchurch, yeah. right? Yeah. right? In which she was outstanding. Oh, I don't think she, she was. She was a major player in The Night no. Manager. Yeah, but do you know what? Somebody, do you remember when I asked you the question last week? I bet you yeah. any money that in the original Le Carre book, yes. her character was a man. Yes. Guess what? What? He was a man. How do you know? Because it was confirmed to me by... There's nothing uh, wrong with changing the, the, the sex of the, uh, well, some I of the main players. Because I said that oh, no Did you way... just say you didn't think she was very good in Broadchurch? No, I didn't, no. Why? I don't like her. I Why? don't think she's very good at all. Why? I just don't like her. Why? I just don't think she's convincing. I mean, I'm not convinced, as, as I wouldn't have been before, yeah. but now knowing that Le Carre's character was changed. Yeah, you know, Le Carre would not have written a part for a pregnant woman running a spy network. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah, well, I mean, that, yeah, but I mean, it's modern. That's, uh, yeah, modern. but it's not. It's changing the way it's all being done. Did you know John Le Carre appeared in The Night Manager? No. He did. Did he? Do you remember the scene where uh, Corky, the little midget yeah. guy, got uh, bladderated in the, in the... In the restaurant. In the yeah. restaurant. Oh, yeah. And started saying... Oh, was he the guy at the other table? He was a, he was a diner at the, the other table. Guy, yeah, the, yeah, that's the, right. The, the old, uh, the, that's the, right. The old man went to apologise That's to. right, absolutely. Oh, well, I don't know if he was the man he went to apologise to. It said, I, I picked up on it, it mm. said he had a cameo role. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not sure he had a speaking role, right. but he was he was one of the guests in the restaurant oh, when right. that happened. Oh, OK. Yeah, is that interesting? It's John Le Carre himself. But you've gone a very long way round Incredible. to tell me Incredible. something that I already didn't know that I Incredible. wanted to know. Incredible. Yeah, all right. Uh, 